Good evening. It's 7 o'clock. We have a quorum. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. First up for general information is Tom Kelly of Northeast Solar. Yeah. Um, just making the second trip back here. It was about six weeks ago, if not just four weeks ago. I dropped off the information for the uh, administrative review. Right. Um, I have a couple more supplemental items you guys are looking to see. Okay. Specifically a photo of the array and also... Where is this going to be again? Lawrence Plain Road. Okay. Also, there's some nice photos showing how between the basically the house and the trees on the street, you're not going to be able to see Whose it. Whose name of the project is that? Jonathan King is the customer. What's the street address? 26 Lawrence Plain Road. You got a pot plate? Or is there? Well, that was in the last packet. Right, but do you have it with you or something? No. Oh. Oh, that's right next to. Uh, you guys said you're going to. Oh, that's right next to Charlie Sabasco. Just okay. not right. Charlie yeah. Sabasco. Okay. So the highlights See, this is are again, it's a uh -huh. you know small scale residential, and the earth anchors we use don't use any ounce of concrete, um, which we know obviously is important, and that's kind of what this talks about a little bit too. This is a stamped structural engineer's letter okay. for the project. So these two documents with what I dropped off last time you said would fit the bill um, so now we're just uh, waiting for feedback slash uh, we think we've checked all the boxes and hoping to apply for the building permit. A common courtesy do you Definitely. Go, do you go to the neighbors and talk to them and just show them what you're going to do with it? No. Nope. You don't do that? No. Nope. Why? Do we have to? No. I don't know. I just asked you if you did. No, um, especially in a setting like this, frankly, where a neighbor isn't even gonna know it's going in or see it once it's there. He's not gonna know what's there. No, it's not important that he has to talk to the neighbor. But we received no feedback from anybody on this. Okay. It, it, none of the town boards, rather, that was yep. distributed to. So, so that triggers we can apply for? Uh, we, 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 don't, we need to vote. Still okay. Go the, okay. We just need to go through the great through the details here. Okay. So, uh, administrative review. It's been out for interdepartmental review. Uh, it's ripe for decision. The required documents were provided. Um, and let's see. You know, there's liability insurance because it's a Dwelling, no it's site control, utility notification. In this case, it doesn't really concern us. There won't be any land clearing, um, no permeability, no soil, soil card, wildlife corridors. Not putting fencing around this. No. Nope. Okay. Um, setbacks at least 50 feet from the nearest property line, except um, along Route 47, designated scenic byway, where it's 100 feet back. Yeah, about good 130, if not up to 150 off 47. And then the closest property line is would be like 54 feet away. It's just the, the setback from the public way yep. is long, is larger on Route 47. Definitely. Because it's yep. a designated scenic byway. Yep. Um, We're happy to keep park, that that way. Parking not applicable. Um, so. So I'll make a motion to find that it satisfies the administrative review. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Super. So there's no review, there's no appeal period. Okay. You can go to the building inspector tomorrow to get a request a building permit. Great. And you can question you can call Bill to verify. Okay. Super. Thank you. Thanks for releasing the rules. Oh, we don't need all these. Yeah. No, you want to eat like that, Okay, take one for the file. Okay. 
and the rest of the season. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Melissa Tepp. Hello. Um, I'm Melissa Teff, and I live at 112 Stockbridge Street in Henley. And um, I'm a full-time psychotherapist. I work in Northampton um, doing counseling with adults. And I'm getting a little bit older. I like to move my full-time practice from Northampton to my home. And so at my home on Stockbridge Street, I have an office um, that has its own entrance. And I have two spaces to park in. Um, I work full time, so I'm working like 8 to 5.30. Um, and, but people will be able to walk from the parking area into the um, So you want to find a home occupation? Yes. Okay. Yep. I've from that. I've talked to the abutters, and they're fine with it and very supportive. So. How do you spell your last name? Um, T-E-F-F-T. -F -F and did you say psychotherapy? I did. So, okay. Yep. So what, you sure I'm putting down the right? right. Yes. Okay, too good. You'll need uh, this home occupation, so you'll need we need a list of the butters uh -huh. um, on mailing labels, two sets. Okay. Um, you can get that from the assessor's office anytime during the day. I think. Okay. Um, and then uh, come back in two weeks and apply for the site for the for, for the review okay. with all the information. Okay. And we'll set up a public hearing date. Well, sure. put the uh, labels on envelopes. An envelope right, right. for each one. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Scott. Keaton. Scott. Keaton. 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 Good evening. Uh, I am a contractor in Northampton, and we are working at 300 Venture Way for Pearson Systems, which is a corporation in yeah. town here. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't recall which one of you gentlemen I spoke with, but uh, you were ready with me. Okay. So. Hoping to have you guys just take a look at this. Uh, we are currently doing a large scale renovation in the building, inside the building, uh, for 80 occupants. And Pearson has decided that they would like to add six handicapped parking spaces. They're not required by code, uh, but they want to do that because the existing handicapped spaces are a little bit far away from this population that that parking lot there is this little is this gray area here okay, okay. 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 What, what building scott is it this is uh building 300 it's uh pearson systems which 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 one though this the old one. one or the new one the old one okay the old one so the what new you, this, 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 this is this is for the so this is this is the original Pearson. Correct. And then they came in to build this NDS? Yes. The yeah. National Evaluation System. Right. Okay. okay. And they came in to build this one, which they connected with the sky. So this is this exactly. is National Evaluation System. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think they they go by yes. Pearson yes. Evaluation yes. Systems. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the one way out there. Right. Yeah, 16. 116 is over here someplace. 116 is out here. Over here. Okay. North Maple is over there. Okay. Yeah, th this is an as-built from the original project. I just wanted to get some sort of site plan. I could show you guys, you know, where this was in relation to. Yeah, the I, don't, I don't see a problem with six, six, what's it, six handicapped Six spaces? handicapped parking spaces. Are I don't need to need to need so you're moving, just putting them. They're they're in a they're in addition to if some that are here, but th this group that's now going to be in part of the building they, they don't want to have to have those handicapped the, it the inside this building there are isolated areas for security and unfortunately these handicapped folks won't be able to get to that area internally so they would have to go all the way around and that that's why they're adding them no change in use no so no there is an issue that has come up because I've heard from three lawyers on this one <laughs> um, this building <clears throat> and I have the file with me actually for the uh, new renovation or the, the expansion building. So this building was built 14 feet off of the property line. And everyone was trying to figure out what's up with that. But I went back to the file and we were told at the time that since Pearson or National <coughs> Evaluation was going to own it all, right. it was going to be merged. That's what I remember that. Um, 
but for some reason uh, it is still being carried as two parcels and there is some concern that there is a zoning violation because of the lack of setback. It doesn't affect this building. Okay. It just relates to that. I, gotcha. I gather they must be refinancing to make this all happen or something. Oh, okay, something yeah. Because yeah. I'm, not, I'm not aware of anything over there. Our, our, our project's confined to basically the first floor of this building here on, the, on that side. So I'll make a motion to approve uh, additional handicapped parking spaces as a minor amendment. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. And shall I take these with me? Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. So um, just so we can build our, our file, um, can you email a PDF of that to the planning at Hadley MA? Sure. Which is on our website. You don't have to write it down. You can sure. find it. I can do that in the morning. Yeah, that's yep. perfect. And I suppose I'll um, reach out to Tim, to the building inspector, just for an amendment to our building permit for this work. I just wanted to do, to do this first. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And again, same thing. If he has any questions, you can contact Bill during the day. Okay. Very good. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Chong Sun. Good evening. Good evening. So, we are trying to open up a, a restaurant in the Big Y Plaza in Amherst. The building is in Amherst, but the plan is to have a um, walk-in cooler out back, an outdoor walk-in cooler out back, which the town cuts through the parking lot right at the building. What do you mean a walk-in cooler? A, a walk-in cooler where... So, so you want to add a walk-in yes. cooler in back? Outside, yeah. And, but the restaurant's going to be from the inside of the building. Yes, yes. How big is the walk-in cooler going to be? It's going to be a uh, seven by fourteen. It's a cooler in the freezer. How far are you from the back boundary? Uh, it's going to be right up against the building. How far is that? No, there's back? a parking lot back. There's there's a yes, parking the back. Parking so there how is. close is it because to the setback? This building out back. So, so there's, there's, there's quite a quite a way from the back, quite a ways from right. back boundary line. Um, just come in to us with us with a with a drawing of what you want to do. Okay. And and in two weeks we'll be here. We we meet the first and third Tuesday of every month. We'll just okay. come back in two weeks. Okay. We can deal with that with administrative without going through any kind of special permits. Okay. Because it's a very small addition. Okay. You just want to see what it looks like. Just want to see okay. what it looks like. Okay. 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 Just a just a, a, a regular plot plan looking down. I'm sure you can. You would probably need that for the building inspector anyways. Yes. Okay. So I just bring us that. Okay. Sounds okay. good. Thank you. Very good. Okay. Anybody else for anything? Administrative. I believe it's the chair. Oh, Attorney Bryan and Susan. Come on down. Paul, do you have something? Yeah, this episode yeah. likes. Oh, yeah, he did something. Oh, you, oh, you, oh, you got the sign? Yeah, just the sign. Uh, the lights. This one is the lights there, though. That's what you're thinking to put in there. This is it going to be facing down? Yeah. Like this. So, like that. Okay. Yeah, that's the, that's the kind of what you have on the East Street property yeah. goes out more. I know I'm going to change the legs. Okay. Yeah, okay, I'm not. And you want this to be signed? And that's going to go on our flyer. And yep. this is the, the sign. Do you have dimensions of how big this is? Yeah, it's got to be. So this is going to be big. Two or sixteen to forty-eight square feet. Yeah. That's what's in the Is that sign going to be lit? Any lights on it? So we we'll put those uh, the lights in the corner. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there like those when they seem to be lit all night long? Not really. You can shut the lights off. The what? You can shut it off. You can say we can shut it off. You guys want these lights shining on this sign all night long? Well, they're not supposed to shine across the street. No, but I mean, you want the sign lit up all night long. No, this, this is always a concern. 
for neighbors because of security versus the uh, the neighbors uh, looking at it. If the neighbors have a complaint, certainly we're going to have to adjust the, uh, he's going to have to adjust the lights. But on the other hand, you want to keep the, the lights and people are going to be stealing parts this of the This would car. be the only business on that lot with the lights on? On that street? It's the only business on the street, yeah. Right. Carl's or any of those, they don't have the no lights in the They got the lights in the back. Yeah. Yeah, and it. then the greenhouses have a lot of lights. Well, you know. But if the, the neighbors are concerned, if it does shine across well, the street, well, you weird. know because yes. they were here and you agree. Yeah, yeah. I would talk to them. Okay. 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 So what is the same dimension? 30, 48 square feet. Is that going to be the only sign, or is it going to be? Um, well, with Jim, it's too big. To it's too big. The okay. sign's too big. It's okay. going to be 40 square feet. Oh, it's only going 40 then. We can just change it now. Okay. Just what, what it, what's that end up with? 40. Uh, 48. So if he made it. I'll make it 40 this time. Just. Well, he can figure out what he wants. One's yeah, not bigger than 40. Downsize it. So downsize it to 40 square feet. Is that going to be the only sign? You're not going to have muffler work, brake work? No, no. Let me know. He's showing. Yep. Okay. Are you going to make a motion on that to accept that yeah. sign? Bill, make it. Uh, I'm not going to make the motion. I'm not participating. Oh, no, you're not participating. Oh, okay. Okay. I will make a motion to approve the sign for exotic uh, <coughs> auto repair, um, provided that it does not exceed 40 square feet. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 A motion passes 4 0 1, abs one abstention. Very good. You don't have to come back here again, though. Yeah, if you want to close on the tomorrow, you have to Don't be shining the lights on your neighbors. Okay. okay. And, this this is for he's going to be posting this in his office. I, I have a. Uh, he's got one. I this so this, this is for our file. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I have the file. Okay. So I'll take. It. Okay. So that's it. Yeah. Good here. I well, thank you very much for the Yeah. Okay. okay. Now, attorney bar against. Oh, yeah. Sir, is that? What do you think? Oh. Sorry, Okay. Just for the sake of completeness, I did five copies of our original bylaw, but went on the warrant and five copies of the 113 comments from KP Law. <laughs> Just came by the letter. Yeah. Thank I you noticed, for coming. I know I remember we tabled both the uh, bylaw and the public consumption. This is what was given to the town administrator to publish for the uh, public consumption. And this is what was published about, for some reason, about half of it. Yeah. I don't know why or how that happened, but we got, I believe this is the revised. That would be. That was what suggested. you were recommended without all the comments taken out. It was like a page, <coughs> a page and a little bit. A is that the page. general bylaw, Chip? That was a general yeah. bylaw right. for public consumption. If you call it like a public consumption and open container were combined into one. Right. And that was, when it was rewritten, that was what uh, KP Law recommended. Well, we did, because the original, we put the public consumption, we enhanced it where the public consumption bylaw was. Right. 
And then we put the enforcement in the other side. Right. So put it together. Yeah. And that's what it was. And for some reason, when it was printed in the warrant, it was different. I know this. So, yeah. so this is okay to put into the Springtown meeting. Yes. Okay. So that's, that, those are the key comments. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, do you have your own copy? I did. I, yep. I can find it. I have mine. Jim, is that going to be our responsibility to present it as the planning board? Or is it going to be the uh, selectmen or the town administrators? I think it's going to be between myself as one member of the planning board and the police chief. Because he was the one that re I, it was done from Susan to, to the uh, marijuana bylaw. And she, well, they recommended we also adopt up for total consumption. And the police chief said, well, we combine it with our open container bylaw. Makes sense. Yeah. And so we gave it to KP Law. They changed, made some changes. And who normally um, presents bylaws? Whoever proposes them. Whoever proposes them. So we're proposing it on behalf of the police department at their request. Okay. So we will present it with the police chief so that we'll present it. But as far as answering questions, I mean, the police department's going to have to answer it because that's a little bit beyond our capabilities. You know, we don't want to get it to make something that's not correct. So one other thing. This was just submitted on behalf of, I guess, Tchaikovsky uh, is showing uh, land area required for cultivation. Which is, um, just, just a couple of graphics that uh, the setbacks would would work. This is his idea. No, that was just that, the, the way that gentleman. It, sure, we're we're going to put, put the building into the 300-foot setback. That's the distance required for prop, that's the property required to do it. We come works out to 18 and a half acres to have 300-foot setbacks from every property line. <clears throat> so, but. So, yeah, well, are we going to go over these one by one, or are we going to take the major issue first? Well, uh, I, I think we can kind of go over page by page where you find something that really jumps out as, you know, why was that done? Does it have to be that way? Stuff like that. Yeah, so can you highlight for us, Joel, what the, what were the, you know, some of these are, are just editorial, like moving a comma. And mm -hmm. some were taking out stuff that we had intentionally put in, and um, we just weren't sure of the rationale okay. of why it was done the way it was done. So, are you guys? Uh, you're all done with this first page? That's the um, public consumption one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're going. We, we are right at the uh, okay. zoning bylaw itself. Okay. So I, I just guess I just have a question on that. Okay. And the enforcement, um, there was a recommendation for three hundred dollar fine. Yes, we have. Are you going to keep that? Yes. Okay, because just because they had commented that they weren't sure about it, but they did note that the attorney general has approved that in some other cases. Not, and, and I know that's where um, Larry had got that from originally. Gotten that from originally. Yes, when you're, excuse me. When you're talking, could you tell us what page you're on? Okay. I'm on the public consumption page. I'm the don't, second. I, believe, I don't believe you page have it. Okay, that's why I couldn't find it. <laughs> okay, that was that was the under enforcement. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure it was yeah. clear. Okay. Yeah, this, the bylaw as revised has a three hundred dollar penalty. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if they don't like it, they'll throw it out. We'll go back and see right. what we got to do. But at least <laughs> we try and you know, that's it. Okay. okay. So now we're under another. Yes. Um, all right. Why don't I then just go page, page by page? I won't comment on all of these. But uh, which one are you using? Yours. So I'm actually. I've got two things in front of me. I've got the warrant article in front of me. Okay. And yeah, then I've which got is, which uh, I printed out for yeah, you. That's this one. Yeah. Okay. And, and yeah. this one's yours. And then yeah. this is their comments. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. And that's the one you're going to deal with. Yeah. Well, I'm going to. Yeah. More. Yes. Right. I, I made notes on both actually. 
Um, so just for starters, you know, we, we made one comment at the very beginning. So if you look at the table of uses, you use the initial SP, but the bylaw already uses SPB. Okay. Right? I mean, yeah. that's the standard. So where you have SP, you'll want to just stick with SPB, because that's the way it is elsewhere in the table. Um, you know, for a special permit from the planning board, of course. Um, so then a couple of, so in Craft Marijuana Cooperative, we've highlighted, and Marijuana Micro Business, all we're saying there is you can keep it in there, but they are by definition a subset of cultivation, as cultivation is defined, and as you'll see, you treat them the same. But like you can leave it in, but we're just highlighting that comment if you were looking at it. So which one that's micro business? So the, the very first one in the table is craft marijuana cooperative. Yes. And then the fourth, fifth one down, um, marijuana micro business. They should be shaded, right? Whenever we is it shaded in your table? Uh, well anyway. It shows up on mine. So yeah, me too. Maybe if you don't have power. Um so the comment we made do you have the written comments? Yes, yeah, so the comment um, would it help if these things were numbered? Well, the, the comments in your column are, are numbered on the right. So you see comment NJC2 and NJC4. So those two comments just say it's a subset of cultivation. You don't need to list it as a separate use. Again, it's harmless, but... You know, but you, I don't, you, we don't want to be redundant, so if you think we should take it out because it's already included, we'll take it out. Yeah, as I say, it's up to you. Trying to, try to figure out what the difference is when there's no difference. Yeah, I right? mean, there, there, is, there are differences between them, but when you regulate yeah. a marijuana cultivator, you're regulating these as well. Okay. Um, and as I said, if you look at how you've treated them in the table, you treat them the same anyway, so there'd be another reason to take it out. But by regulating marijuana cultivator, you are regulating craft marijuana cooperative and you are regulating a marijuana micro business. Okay. <coughs> There's a question on that. So on the cultivation, you can't obtain the product, but on the on, but on the cooperative you can. So some place in this bylaw, you could bring in 2,000 pounds of marijuana to the facility. I think for the residents of Hadley, that's a big difference mm -hmm. of marijuana okay. coming in versus marijuana being grown on site. And I would just ask that we keep it separate because I think that makes it different. Yeah, you could certainly do that, and you're absolutely right about that. Again, they're regulated the same, but there is that distinction at some point you might decide to regulate it differently, so you could keep it in. I'm not saying they're identical, but I'm saying that okay. at core they're both cultivation, but... Uh, are, 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 are you saying that marijuana grown in South Deerfield can't be sold in Hadley? No. No, the point is the, the, um, the micro business can import marijuana. Can't or can't? Can. Can. Yeah. can. Yeah. And then uh, they can grow their own as well and then process it on site. All right. So that is a difference. Um, so it's got nothing to the retail end. It's still just the growing and processing. Because a grower, by the way, and this isn't necessarily well understood, a grower is allowed to process on site. Right. You know, just as somebody grows apples can make apple cider and people tomatoes can make tomato sauce, whatever. So a grower under the law and the regulations can do some processing. They can't do manufacturing. So manufacturing primarily consists of taking the marijuana, processing it in some way, and then putting it into whether it's a brownie or a cookie or a, a gummy bear kind of thing. Gummy bears specifically aren't allowed, but something like that. That's the manufacturing side. But a certain amount of processing happens just as when you harvest any crop, you do a certain amount of How are you going to dry it out, Joe? Are you going to hang it in a tobacco shed or are you going to use, what's the intent? There's, there's several ways it could be done. One could be done, we, for instance, we work with Raw Food Central in Connecticut that, um, that does kale chips. We, we strip kale and, and ship it to them. We had a truck down there today. And they have 
controlled uh, units that, that try it. Um, that would probably be the best way. There's a little computer and it programs the temperature rise and you know the cycles to try it properly. That would probably be the most secure and uh, effective way of, ma of managing that. It could also just be hung up to dry in, in the same hoop houses where it's grown. Mm -hmm. Um, this is the only significant points on, on the first page I was on that um, Oh, yeah, so on the next page, purposes, we just uh, suggested uh, a concise language, if you will, and um, we actually have a slight typo in our language. So if you look in that big first full paragraph on the top of the second page, our new text is all underlined. And in the last line that we underlined, it says natural and build environment. It should be built environment of the town and its residents. Do you see where I am? Yeah. So the build should be built? Yeah. Yeah, that's our typo there. B I L T instead of D. Yeah, that should have been a the word T. Okay. I mean the word built. So then getting into definitions, um, so actually what went in the warrant, so some changes got made, I think maybe from some of our earlier comments, but by the warrant article. So our um, so you see our first comment on definitions, we crossed out cannabis and put marijuana, but um, the article that went into the warrant, you already had changed it to marijuana cultivation. Um, so, and why is that change there? Because that's how it's used throughout the, the statute and regulation. Just trying to, a lot of our comments here are to keep it consistent with the statutory terminology and the regulations, the CCC regulations. And one of the things that happens here is the, because with your, um, your medical marijuana bylaw, you used some terms that weren't statutory, the RMD and the OMMD, or whatever it was. So there are a few places here we'll have to clean that up. So um, cannabis cultivation is what we should be using? No, marijuana, cult marijuana cultivation. So it's confusing because by the, the, the um, what we commented on here, the, the marked up one, uh, we'd made some of these comments earlier, and so they got made by the time it went into the warrant. So that, that change is already made, is all I'm saying. And so then throughout that definition, we... Um, okay, so this is not... See, there was so many things <clears throat> Okay, never mind. So that, um, so that your definition of, of marijuana cultivation is uh, is fine as is. As I said a lot of these changes were already made. Um, so and then the next one, we're just saying, see comment above, these terms could be eliminated. You could rely on state law definitions. All oh, right, so. Um, the first comment on the second page is simply saying a lot of these terms that add a lot of text to the bylaw are in either state law or the Cannabis Control Commission regulations. So I mean a lot of towns want to put it all in the bylaw so people can read it all there. But on the other hand it adds like two or three pages to the bylaw so you could just say as defined in general laws. They still have to comply with the state statute, right? Right. So why are we duplicating that? That's our point. Okay. That's what we're saying. Well, you know, some people might think it would be useful to have that information. It, exactly. Okay. I could understand that because not everybody is going to know right. to look at the state regulation. Well, well they would have to. I, I think at this level we can expect that they should be looking at the state regulations. Right. Because the applicants, because certainly, yeah. We're not going to have anyone, uh, as opposed to someone seeking a building permit or site plan approval, we have a whole range from 
Mountain Farm or Hampshire Mall down to um, that guy who wanted to open a garage. They were all subject to site plan approval, but uh, they're different levels of sophistication. It, by the time someone comes to us, they have to be sophisticated enough to have already navigated through the regulatory structure. So, so under definition, should we be, <coughs> excuse me, should we be referencing 935 CMR 500 or master under laws? Both. Um, so I mean, here we've noted. So actually, the CMR is more detailed. Okay. So I mean, that's what we noted here. It actually, said for. Uh, Cultivation is not defined in um, uh, the CMR, but um, but they can find it at both sites. Yes, or, or one or the other. As I said, in some cases, um, it's more detailed in the regulations. So why don't we just offer them more both sites and let them figure it out? Yeah, and when they come in and say, you know, you're aware of it, you got to comply with this. Yeah. So it's 935 CMR 500. Yes. And, um, and uh, so you know what we can do if you want, we can go through, because not all of these are defined there. Oh, okay. Um, so we can go through, uh, mainly it's the ones, so cultivation. Is not defined? Is, yeah, the ones that are cultivation is, that what marijuana is, um, cannabis and marijuana products, again, and cannabis can come out, but um, is defined, uh, ceases to operate, we'll talk about, is not defined. The commission, I think you want to leave in. Um, host community agreement, you'd leave in. Craft marijuana cooperative is certainly defined. Um, hemp is defined. Independent testing laboratory is defined. Um, licensee, we keep in. Manufacturers defined. Cultivators defined. Establishments defined. Micro business, so forth. So, I'd say three quarters of these, at least, are defined. So that would shorten this by three pages. So you know, we'll, we'll flag. Um, well, if they're not all in defined in that CRM uh, 500, why don't we just list both sections of where they're defined in? Well, then they may not all be defined as what Joel's saying, so we'll, we, may, we may need to leave in well, several definitions. Right, and so what right. we'll do we'll go through, and for those that already are defined, we'll simply say C, uh, S. General Laws, Chapter 94G, Section 2, I think it's the definition section, and uh, 935 CMR 500 uh, for the definition. I, I kind of tend to agree with Joel. That Put in the uh, CMR 500 because remember the very small quantity generator for hazardous waste. The state regulations change all the time, so if we had it in our bylaw, we'd have to amend it all the time. Whereas referring to the state regulation makes it clear that it has been amended, and they should know, and we should know. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right, so we'll go through and we'll identify those. Then as to the other definitions now, in page three, ceases to operate. So here you define it and you say, the marijuana establishment closes and does not transact business for a period greater than 60 days with no substantial action taken to reopen. But if you go to one of the last pages here, it's actually a full year. Um, 30.4.5.4.1. Marijuana establishment ceases operation for 365 yeah. days. Yeah. 30.1? 30.4. It's on page 9. If you look at lower right, you've got page numbers. Page, page 8 or page 9, nine depending on your, on your number. Oh. Why did they give them a whole year to cease operations? Well, what if you, if they, for example, uh, what if somebody grows it outside? Is this, uh, you know, six months, or three, what's it, three months? Or 
Well, in one place, under the definition, it's, it's 60, 60 days. days 60 months. days. So if you grow it outside, not in a greenhouse, but outside, 60 yeah. days, you cease operation. I'm, I'm guessing they meant two during different, the winter. I'm guessing they meant two different things. So you'd lose your permit? Well, that's what. That's the question. So I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that the mayor ceases to operate made reference the retail end of it. That's, I'm sure that's what we meant. But okay. Yeah, you're right. And the 365 yeah. days references mm -hmm. the rest of them. Yeah. Because growing, I mean, let's say, if I were, let's say they were to go open grow. Right. There's going to be roughly six months of the year where you're not going to grow, so that's not ceasing to operate. Right. That's just impossible to grow. Yeah. So where were the two references? So first... Then the page definition ceases is to operate, operate which is on page two. your page two, Bill. No. It's the second definition on page two. Okay. So we could just add retail in there if you want. Yeah, yeah. I think that we just, need to, we just need to define it better. So, yeah, here you use the term marijuana establishment, which of course is everything. Right. Um, so okay, and 365 is 30.4.5.4. Point one. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think the person that's growing this stuff should have any limitation at all as to when he when he can't grow it. Well, it depends on the kind of growing. Yeah, I mean, you know, he may make make a market decision that he doesn't want to grow it this year because there's an overabundance of marijuana in the, in the system. But does so he can't say he doesn't lose it, should lose his permit because of that? But what if the state says? This is the law. What do we do? Override the state law? No. The state actually is silent. I believe. I, I don't recall seeing anything in the state. There's nothing in the law, anyway. I don't know if there's anything in the regulations about ceasing operations. Then why should we put something in there like this? For what reason? Uh, well, so for instance, I mean, that's a good question. You don't have to. But at some point, because the market might take care of it. I mean, if it closes down, somebody, either the person who operated the establishment owns the land or they're leasing it, but whatever it is, somebody's going to want to start making better use of it. And they'll put the, the but there's circumstances up. that Sell the rent. something would happen yeah. to a farmer, yeah. whatever it may be, yeah. and they're going to lose yeah. it's a everything they invested it's out a, the window. You know, a farmer should be able to make a business decision whenever he wants to. Yeah. We don't want to limit that. Yeah. It's a I don't, I we have to be careful who we uh, assume a farmer. We're not. Yeah, you know, you're, you're talking. It could you're talking, be a you're talking commercial business, mega business. 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 It could no. be. Well, that's yeah. going to be for a later discussion. But uh, yeah, I think you've got to assume it could be either. Yes, well, it's got to. That's cover exactly all. right. Yeah, so we we got to be very careful on that. That's uh, that's going to be the dis main discussion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So um, so then for starters, anyway for ceases to operate, sounds like what you want to say there is marijuana retailer okay. instead of establishment. That makes sense. <coughs> marijuana retail establishment. Well, it's just a defined term is just is marijuana retailer. That, that'll do yeah, it. So we Closes and does not transact business for a period greater than 60 days with no substantial action taken to reopen. I mean, that's up to you on the sum. That's on page two? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, it's on three of mine. Well, it depends, yeah. On the bill is on page two. So, was that in any conflict with a special permit expiring after about two years? Or? That's so. Uh, well, that's. No, that expires if you never start using it. Once a special permit's underway, there's no nothing statutory that says it has to keep operating. It's just uh, oh. if they don't open it. You know, the first year or two years, whatever. Ah, gotcha. Says, yeah. This assumes they've opened, and then again, the way your bylaw has it, um, oh. this wasn't our language. After 60 days, I and mean, then 60 days kind of short. I mean, you know, what I think is what happens in the retailer or something comes up unexpected, mm -hmm. and in 60 days they lose their license, their permit. I don't think that's right. You? No, I don't think that's right. But is that the state regulation? I don't think the state no. regulation covers. We, we can we can we can worry about these details later. Right now, we just want to okay. get get into these the things that changes that were made of what we should do to make them better. Yeah. We can always come back to these. Does it make sense to do this? Right. Okay. 
Um, so, Susan, this is going to be perpetual employment for you. Maybe. Yeah. Right now, it's in the headache. <laughs> 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 I'm going to Blanford to do the same thing tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Probably run into our comments there. Too. Oh, I guess. I guess. <laughs> Well, once you get a review with the, with the town council here, at least it'll be, you'll be a little slightly versed for tomorrow. Right. That's what I hope. I think Blanford is one of their towns, too. Yeah, yeah that's what I mean. Yeah. That's exactly what I need. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't look at Blanford's, but there's two people, one or two, get to look at those. Um, so on the CSIS operator, I'm going to look to see if there's anything in the regulations. Okay. So I'll just get back to you. If you want to, yeah, give me points. We flag the issue. Um, and the commission, you know, we just deleted language that we really didn't need. A host community agreement. So you, you had a definition of it, maybe to the start with you guys, a community host agreement, but most of the world calls them host community agreements. So and the statute actually uses the phrase host community That's agreement. fine. So. Yeah, I didn't write it originally either, okay. so. Um, so now this actually, uh, and I don't know really what the how you had it in the, um, Joe, have you gone over with the selectman with this, with the host agreement and everything? No. No? No. You mean these, I mean there hasn't been an occasion to, there was one that was entered into for years ago for medical, mm -hmm. but it hasn't come up. It only come up when and if somebody applies uh, for a uh, an adult, you know, recreational one. And yeah, we, we certainly would expect to be involved. We've been heavily involved in that. So actually, there's a change li in language in host community agreement here. But again, um, you already had made this change in the version that ended up in the warrant, and it, it's the last phrase that says up to a three percent community impact fee and that's the change we recommended because the revenue sharing is, is not a good phrase to use. It, the uh, impact fee is the statutory term and it, one, in fact, the most controversial aspect of host community agreements and I don't know what kind of press it's getting on here but in the globe, you know, the industry is just banging. The globe's got this one writer who actually is extremely knowledgeable but he's very much in the industry side and they're saying, you know, these host community agreements uh, should be reviewed by the CCC, and the CCC voted that they didn't have any interest in doing that, and there's a lot of skirmishing going on back and forth. But the central issue is the fees that communities might be looking to collect, because the statutory, the statute talks about up to 3% of a community impact fee, which has to be justified. But then in other agreements that we've been involved in, the applicants are offering more generous terms. And we call those community benefit fees. So if you call it revenue sharing, it's not clear. So you want to use the community impact fee because nobody can argue with your right to get it because it's right in the statute. The so-called community benefit payments, what's the community to do when somebody shows up and says, we want to do this enormous thing, and we're going to pay an extra $250,000 a year. I haven't met a community yet that said no. But isn't it true under the impact fee that they have to show the actual impact of this into the community? That's right. And what it's going to cost for policing, for maintaining, and all that? Yep, yeah. yeah. They, have to, they have to have something. I know we did that in the sewer department, and we listed the right. total cost of, of everything <coughs> to verify your percentage mm -hmm. of your impact fee right so what's going to happen is all the communities are charging three percent up front and then they'll have to you know at three the percent year, of what well the three percent uh oh yeah three percent of whatever the revenue is so if you're a grower it's what you sell it i mean a grower doesn't sell it at retail they sell it wholesale it's like a sales tax yeah total yeah. sales yeah that's the three percent of total sales. But then you can charge the retail at three percent too, right? That's right. So the total ta the total impact fee could actually be nine, ten, twelve percent. Well, I mean theoretically it'll only be six because I mean it could be nine, I suppose, because you got a grower who goes mm -hmm. to a manufacturer. Well, but it's one impact fee. I mean it's not. Well, 
and the, um, I mean, it will add up. The retailer is not going to be charged the impact fee, and the impact fee is going to be cumulative. Isn't it based on the seller? Yeah. The final sale of that? I think yeah. it should be the final sale rather than the farmer because well, there's too many people. Yeah, it's, like, it's like a value, yeah, this yeah, is like yeah, a value yeah, added tax. Get, get off of this farmer thing because yeah. farmers aren't going to be the only ones no, growing this. It's a sale. It's sale. a sale, right. right. The so the farmer is going to sell. Can we, put in, can we put in the definitions when I say farmer, I mean whoever grows it. <laughs> okay. Of I, I have no problem charging anybody that's no, running. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't think a shoe smith's going to a shoemaker's going to be growing. I personally don't have any any issue with charging anybody that's growing the stuff a three percent fee. Okay, this stuff so is a three percent to sell it after. Absolutely. Yes. And so you know, the, the, keep in mind that the wholesale number is going to be a lot lower than a retail number. So it's not. Going to be three right. plus three plus three on the same number. Well, you who, who's going to determine the final price? Well, it'll be uh, it, it will be reported to the Cannabis Control Commission. All the stuff is yeah. so they're not going to tell you what you can sell this stuff at. It's no. whatever the market bears, right? right? Right. And from experience from other states, is that it's quite up and down. Somebody might be growing better marijuana than somebody else, and that might be more. Well, more, right? you're absolutely right about that, and then because it will all be graded, you know, people will be charging more for yeah. what the grades people like. But I mean, the experience so far has been on just on glut. You know, the, I think Oregon, in particular, suddenly they just had a huge amount, and the prices collapsed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Give me on. Um, so the commission, the host community agreement. Uh, so yeah, that, so again, as I said, some of these changes you've already made. Um, now we've suggested on this one, our markup that you delete host community, but you had already done that. Um, uh, just for information on hemp, earlier on <clears throat> we had a comment, but just, so you know, so hemp by definition is something whose THC content is well under 1%. So it's not defined as marijuana. So it's just a regular agricultural product. The DAR, Department of Agricultural Resources, has a, uh, an interim policy where they're getting, starting to regulate it. And it seems that the main purpose of the regulation is to test it to make sure it's not actually marijuana because it's a plant in the same family, so I imagine it can be mistaken. I mean, if you're looking at a field and say, oh wait, that's marijuana, you say, no, no, it's hemp, it's hemp. So they actually test it to make sure that it's hemp to some degree. Anyway, it's not something. So how did this get mixed in the marijuana? Well, if it's not marijuana, because that's no, it's, that's an excellent point because it is actually the same species. Exactly, it's the same species. As the you don't species. use hemp ropes anymore. Everything is yeah, a, what, what is hemp nylon? Close, close. There's a chain of stores some called clothes, Hempist. Yeah. I'm sure there's one in North Hempist. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, they, yeah. Get a, they get an oil from the seeds, a CBD oil. Oh, hemp oil. That, yeah. that helps like with arthritis and yeah. and. Uh, and uh, Pennies. Yeah, I mean, some of the farms, I know there's one farm in Lanesboro that sells a lot of their CBD oil. Well, there's one, there's one farm in Hattie been approved to grow it. Okay. Hemp? Yes. Yeah. You know, apparently George Washington used it because he had <laughs> bad teeth problems. You know, I've never read about it. Yeah. Put it on his teeth? No, just as long as you're on that topic, um, when, when people are raising hemp, is, is it being, is it bothering people? I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that. No. No, I, again, the reason I, I mentioned it is to say <laughs> the, the main reason it's in the discussion at all is that the state wants to be sure that somebody who says they're growing hemp really is growing hemp. And if they are, then they're going to leave it alone. They're going to want to test it because if it turns out it's, you know, five They're eliminating a lot loophole joke, so. Yeah. yeah well, I'm just, I guess my point was that if people are raising hemp, and they are raising hemp in Lanesboro and in Vermont and in New York State, and it's not causing the red flags right. for odor and things. Yep. And it's, it's, a different animal. Of, it's a different animal. Does it have the same kind of aroma? Yes. No. It has the same it does it, it's yeah. Just the, the percentage of one <laughs> thing in there is different, and that's below 1%. Yeah. 
Okay. All right. So moving on. Um, so the host community just because it's not needed or something. Right. And, and I didn't know why. if you, you may want to see the copy that actually went into the warrant, because a lot of these changes did get made. Mm -hmm. uh, so okay now. The, Definition of marijuana establishment. For page one? Sorry. So, Six. I'm on my page four, but you know what? See our page three. But I, I think this got cleaned up. Marijuana establishment, yeah, it doesn't have any marks. So I'm on page three. Whatever. Five page Oh, so here it is. Um, so if you'll see, the first sentence is a long sentence. It's four lines long. And it ends with the phrase, except a medical marijuana treatment center. Now, the problem is, you don't use the term medical marijuana treatment center. You use uh, RMD, um, uh, registered, registered, Medical. medical dispensary, the registered marijuana dispensary, or the OMMD, Outdoor Medical Marijuana Dispensary. So where it says accept a medical marijuana treatment center, you'll want to put, or you just shorten put RMD or OMMD and get those terms. What are we taking out of there? The no, you're not center? taking out where it yeah. says the medical marijuana treatment center. Yeah. yeah. That's sort of yeah. a generic state term, but in your bylaw now, the section right before this one is the, the medical marijuana one, and use the terms uh, registered, it's registered medical dispensary, or registered marijuana dispensary. Use the terms RMD and OMMD. So dispensary is different than the treatment center. Well, the treatment center is um, the the state generic term, and this what got used there. Anyway, I'll, I'm just suggesting there that you, you, you put in the, the Hadley specific terms yeah. after that. Then, um, the research facility. We gave you different language. So we, they originally had that language that you have recommended in there, but they did not think that that was enough, and so I found this other definition in CMR uh, page 123. So in the regs? Yeah. Yeah. That's where that came from. I didn't just make it up. You mean the more detailed one? Yeah, or? yeah. Yeah, oh, I mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we had, we had an entity license to engage in research projects by the commission. Um, That's what we originally had, too. Oh, you did? Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. so. yeah, but we, yeah, we, 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 thought, we thought that was a little bit too broad. Yeah, in any event, this is going to be one that we're going to just refer to the statutory and that's fine. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's good. Could probably put the word back in that we had. Well, let's see. Yeah. Fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Um, is not in the um, statute, it must only be in the regs. All right, so we'll just go with whatever is in the regulation. Okay. <clears throat> Marijuana, where to go, what is the process? I don't know. 
Okay. I imagine it's in the regs. Um, and some, let me say, you know, the stalks and branches, some people use to make, I guess, what you call lower grade products. So I, I don't know, you know, different um, growers might have different practices. Because there is, I'm told, some amount of THC in, I mean, the, the, the buds is where high potency is, but even in the leaves and stalks. And so, so some people, you know, I don't know if you use centrifuges or whatever, but try to extract something out of every part of the plant. So I don't know how different manufacturers would work with that. <clears throat> so what are you going to do with the stocks, Mr. Grower? So when the law Find says it. that you cannot have any discernible part that is being disposed of, going into a pile that people could pick it out. So it has to be, if you're going to put it into compost, you'd have to break it up fully. So any popcorn buds that weren't harvested because they're not worth anything, they would have to be broken up in the disposal process. Mm. Mm. So what's that mean? You've got to grind it up? You either grind it up or you could put it through a shredder or you could put it through a corn chopper so that it's all broken up and you can't virtually get anything out of it. It's a, a doable thing. Mm -hmm. um, but it's organic matter. You could put it back into the field if you wanted to. That's correct. Or, or into the grow, whatever. But nobody could go through and clean it. Okay. <laughs> well, if they did try, there should be nothing there. Yeah. You um, put it in the source system? <coughs> you could, but it would be a lot of it. Cost you you wouldn't money. want it. You could re it'll be receiving. Okay. And distribute those seeds. So if you look at the definition of medical marijuana treatment center, <clears throat> also known as a registered marijuana dispensary. So again, um, the, the town's bylaw refers to registered marijuana dispensaries and also off-site medical marijuana dispensaries. They're you know, the idea when you first created the bylaw mm -hmm. was that there would be two. The off-site concept was that they didn't grow it there. And then the uh, R&D was that they both grew it and dispensed. What's the status of your R&D? It is, they are s slowly, and I do mean slowly, <laughs> clearing the site. They finally pulled the tanks. The tanks. Yeah. The, 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 that was the critical part. The old Sonoco station. Oh. They're, I think they're waiting for <coughs> the adult marijuana to be approved and then they're going to apply for both. Yeah. There. That's my guess, but we have no proof of that. So you have, because yeah, they get a leg up by being. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But they're, we're coming up on their three years since they got their permit, so. Oh. They're, 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 they're doing something on the site, but it's like, I, I, to say the sales pace, I mean, I've seen sales move faster for sure. Yeah. All right. um, so that's, so where it says Medical Marijuana Treatment Center, also known as a registered marijuana dispensary, RMD, need to add the phrase, and, you know, off-site medical marijuana dispensary. So we don't even need to use medical marijuana treatment center because, well, unless that's in the state. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So you may as well just yeah. have them all in there. Okay. And then you've already deleted those other. The medical, they're, Joe, they're automatically awarded a contract to sell recreation. No, but they were given a leg up. They were allowed to be first in the door to apply, uh, that, and that distinction now is gone because everybody's allowed to apply now. But the, the, the law allows them, the way it's written, it got changed, but it allows them to convert or, or it prevents a town in a zoning bylaw from, it, it prohibits a town in a zoning bylaw from preventing them to convert. So once they got that site approved for medical, all other things being equal, they can convert that to a, uh, a recreational. They can do both? They can do both. They can. Originally, so the best example is the old, remember the old auction barn up in Amherst? Yeah. So 
somebody came in for a medical facility early on and got approved, and their proposal was, and they disclosed to the town, you know, eventually we're going to do adult recreational use, and we're going to put a wall. Remember how high that building is? They're going to put a wall all the way up to the ceiling to separate the two. And then when the Cannabis Control Commission promulgated their regulations, they said you could have two on one site. It just had to be separated by a counter. They actually had a but problem. they can't be both be not for profit, can they? I mean, and and they dropped the not for profit requirement. Yeah, you don't need the the right. medical ones. Don't have to be not for profit anymore. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing all of these conversions now happening. In, in different so if I could digress for just a second, when we approved the medical marijuana in the former gas station because of the traffic studies they gave us. They, they com compared themselves to a, uh, like a CVS, um, a small drugstore for traffic. And we did approve it on the basis that the traffic demands would be light. But I don't think we're convinced that the traffic demands of a <coughs> adult use could be <coughs> accommodated on that site oh, so yeah. that falls under the all things being equal yeah yeah okay all right you, you may hear more about that okay well yeah and what was the footprint they were proposing they, they, about they, 2000 yeah basically they were going within the existing structure yeah. you know, which was a, a stock gas station with a two-bay garage two service bays mm -hmm. um, but smaller, older. It might right around there, like eight, maybe eight yeah. it was, it's, an old, it's an old mom and pop gas station, yeah. so it's mom and pop repair station that sold snowflake gas. Yeah. And it had, I want to say, at least three or four owners through the years, but it's been there for a very long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we put that in the in the original decision that we were not automatically going to approve. Um, adult use if that ever became law because of, I think I specifically mentioned because of traffic concerns, but mm -hmm. you may, that may come back to, you'll hear, you'll hear about that. Might, might be mm -hmm. the next millennium. Okay, so, picking up the pace, so applicability, um, in that very first paragraph again, um, and we didn't highlight this, but the second sentence, this section shall not be construed to prevent the conversion of a medical marijuana treatment center licensed or registered. So here again, comma, uh, or RMD or OMMD. See where I am? Mm -hmm. uh, you want to add that in there. So that, by the way, is the statutory language that uh, can prevent a conversion um, engaged in the same type of activity. Right? So, moving on. Um, so, at, at section thirty point four, additional requirements slash conditions. We highlighted there that first sentence, but the planning board shall be the special permit granting authority slash site plan review. That made its way into the what's in the ward uh, article, so that's all set. Um, yeah, we made a, a comment here that, so for instance, the term marijuana establishment is frequently capitalized, but not always. You know, some bylaws will capitalize defined terms, so you just want to be System. I'd, I'd say it is most often capitalized, but not always. Um, now, in this section, section 30.4.1.3, the hours will be set by the permit granting authority. And then it says, but in no event shall an RMD or OMMD facility be open to the public. And no sale or other distribution shall occur, blah, blah, blah. It's basically setting the hours. And our only suggestion here is that if you want to, that the regulation of the RMD and 
OMMD actually belongs in section 29, not in section 30. I think this sh should have been the marijuana retailer again. Oh, okay, okay. So in this case, you don't, don't need... do you think? Yeah. But I know of it. I see, I see. So yeah. And so it probably just got carried away. Yeah. That belongs in a retail in the bank. No, the word should be retail. The word should be marijuana retail. No, then not, shall not a, RMB or open right. a marijuana retail. That makes sense. Right. Oh, so I had a question on your 20%. So how many um, package store licenses are there? In Seven. Seven. So it's going to be one. Two. Two 20%, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> a little slow on that. Um, so two is going to be your the max. Yeah, yeah. Except the Slackman one. Yeah. Well, Slackman one. This was not clearly communicated. The selectmen want a hard cap of two, but it's our understanding that in order to do that, uh, and in order to avoid trouble if the number of licenses is expanded, that we do have to go through the exercise of a town meeting vote on a separate article to cap it at two and a separate ballot vote to cap it at two. No. Well, now no. you, you wouldn't now. You? But <clears throat> when you got to your 11th package store license, you'd need the ballot question. If yeah. we had, if you had two, if we had limited it to two, yeah, yeah, or we'd have to come back to town meeting to amend it, the zoning bylaw by a two-thirds majority. So we we were recommending the floating number, yeah. and they want they wanted the hard cap. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Granted, we're, we're a ways away from ever getting 11, but yeah. down the road, if we, because it's so far down the road that would ever come to fruition, it could be suddenly, holy smokes, are we in a mess? Well, well that would be totally up to the softball because they issue the, the liquor license. Oh, well, I know. And then. But let me ask this what, what's been the growth of package store licenses over the years? Probably been seven. They, well, years, they just. Or seven. I think. <laughs> Very directly soon. proportional to the number of students on campus. <laughs> but the, uh, <laughs> they just got it. They were, they were going for an exemption a couple of years ago at town meeting to apply for some kind of a special permit for a license, liquor licenses. I don't know if it was serve licenses or package store licenses, yeah. Yeah. where you're allowed by population to have this many, but you could go for expansion of so many more with yeah. state approval. And I'm not sure which one it was a floor permit or package or what. I mean, I, 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 but I know that the town meeting I approved it. That actually. Yeah. Um. So I think we, we still have unissued licenses. So I'm not sure when you give that. Yeah, I know that on, on, under the new, that particular program, the company wouldn't own the license like they do now. The liquor, a liquor license right now is very valuable. Under that the new program the you would you would use it yeah but if you turned it over or you moved or decide I don't want to do it anymore it would revert back to the town and you don't own this like you're renting it right that was under that would have been under the special act the right. terms the spec it's funny the legislature's gone back and forth on that but um, in any event a lot of the special acts for a while were written that it was specific to that operator and it yet got turned in when that operator yeah, was okay. done so, okay. too. The, so, uh, so the interesting question, if we have authorized but unissued, are we only counting, when we're doing the 20%, are we only counting the issued off-premises licenses or the authorized off-premises? Yeah, the statute says issued. Um, okay. So that's, and that's so it's correctly phrased here. Okay. To refer to issue. So, um, I mean, I guess, honestly, it would be worth having a conversation with the selectmen about it because, you know, understandably, it might be a cause for concern, so somebody should be keeping an eye. I, I don't know if there's any unissued, un, 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 unissued package store licenses. 
But even as, as somebody comes in to apply, you know, right. It's so about the gas stations. Well, well Pry, Pry was able to get one without yeah. any trouble. They didn't. They got it directly from the town. So that was a that was a new one. Um, uh -huh. exactly. So I don't know how many authorized but unissued there are. Okay. Yeah. And well, they should be aware of this. It shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. Shouldn't you, as town council, advise them and put them on notice about that? Um, yeah. I, I mean, nobody, nobody from the selectmen has, you know, raised the issue, the concern about the. They, well, they the, probably don't know about it. Yeah. Well, I'll have a conversation with David and just. Yeah. Um, let them. Well. Yeah, let them know where it stands at this point. Now, you know, if there's a transfer of a license, that has to go through the selectmen as well. As right. I'm sure you all know. So, I mean, they're able to keep an eye on it. And, of course, everybody has to come in for a renewal at the end of each year. But a transfer doesn't create a new... Does, no, you're right. But I'm saying, so they're able to keep track of all of the licenses, all of the traffic, if you will, in the licenses. They renew them every year. Yeah, and, right. and the applications will be coming in in November for a December renewal. And, um, yeah, they'll want to... Keep an eye. I mean, you still have a cushion. Even at ten, the number is still going to be two. But as soon as you get to eleven, it's going to round up. Um, all right. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a lengthy comment here. If you so, if you look at comment number NJC. Uh, well, actually, there are two, 19 and 20. I was going to comment on 20, but 19, um, it says no outside storage permitted. So comment number 19 goes with that short section 30.4.2.2, no outside storage permitted. So our comment is that the regulations allow marijuana establishments to operate in, quote, enclosed areas which are defined as indoor or outdoor areas, equipment blocks and security devices and so forth. So outside storage uh, could be defined as following, you know, it, uh, under that. In other words, the Cannabis Control Commission allows the use of outdoor areas as long as it's properly secured. So maybe you want to say no outdoor storage, storage is permitted unless it's properly enclosed and secured as required under the um, CCC regulations. So the first draft, we did write it to accommodate both outside, well, outside and inside storage and growth for that matter. Um, and in reaction to some comments that were made, we did sort of a rewrite on, Jim did a rewrite on the fly to say that everything had to be indoors. Mm -hmm. And um, well, so that, that is one of the flashpoints as to um, how much this is going to be completely internal. And in fact, the original draft bylaw that you had prepared, the PVPC prepared, said everything was going to be inside. Um, and I think part of that was informed by the number of mill buildings that are empty and available, um, East Hampton, Holyoke, what have you. Uh, but we're an agricultural community and we're interested with thinking that maybe someone would want to grow out, outdoors, or, you know, especially some of the craft uh, growers. But then that triggered a long discussion about smells and whether this, the odors would be escaping the premises. And um, that's about where we... The lighting. Uh, and security. Yeah. Well, so, so the CCC regs... Okay, this is... Address it. I mean, they allow, they require, um, they require lighting, they require security. Um, the, the smell issue, you know, you, you can't contain the smell in an outdoor facility. And so maybe this gentleman's graphic helps a little bit. In other words, if somebody's going to grow and there's the 300 foot setback requirements, there's going to be a lot of land buffer. 
I, I mean, we don't have the answer to that. You've got good language in here about controlling odors. Wow. But Hadley does have land that's like the Aquavito, the honey pot. Where nobody lives. Right. Yeah. And even down by, I don't know, by Mitch's Marina. But it, if that land is under APR, you can't grow it on the APR land, right? Some is, some isn't. Well, APR, Agricultural Preservation Restriction, it's preserved for agriculture, and this is agriculture. No, no, no. 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 I spoke to DAR's general counsel. Okay. And they You're were saying because yet? they use federal money, they don't allocate the federal money. It all goes into a pot. So every APR it's theoretically <laughs> has a piece, every current APR has a piece of federal money in it. And on that basis, they wow. say they do not approve it. Don't you think we ought to make an overly map of just actually where this could sit in this town? No, I know. Uh, we could look at that down the road. That we, that's an idea, but the problem is no matter where you do that, I can think of a number of areas that we could do that that have lots of open fields. Uh -huh. And I will use Lisa in the back that she was she was one that suggested it. Well, an ideal place would be, in my opinion, on the east side of Shattuck Road because there is acres and acres of open fields and woodland. On the west side of Shattuck Road, there's heavy residential. Mm -hmm. So if you put the setback far enough back, it would still be away. So no matter what we do, there will be people that will not like it. Mm -hmm. And an overlay map, all it's going to do is single out this farmer or this landowner from this landowner. My opinion is we put in the bylaw wording such that this is what it must meet. Mm -hmm. I don't know what those numbers and words are. So that if you meet it, you can grow it in these areas without singling out this landowner or this land. I mean, it's a great idea to put an overlay map in, but when you get to the <coughs> details, you're, you're, you're essentially favoring some landowners over others. Mm -hmm. But that would not include in the industrial building where they got scrubbers and everything else. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't say they wouldn't. So uh, this, I didn't say it this is the crux right, right here. And, yeah. and uh, I thought this through a little bit. For example, the state allows basically two acres. And we originally thought that two acres, like a two acre cornfield was not a big deal. However, they want to grow it inside into greenhouses. There's a couple of greenhouses next to my farm. That red light glows. Yeah. Jim can see it eight miles away to his house. Put two acres of that, 100,000 square feet of greenhouses, mm -hmm. you're going to light up the whole valley. Mm -hmm. So I am on the road to compromise. Like we compromise on solar panels, not to have an unlimited amount of 50 acres of solar panel, which overwhelms the wherever it is. So my compromise would be, let's start small. See how it does affect. And the smallness would be to the size of a tobacco barn, which is probably 4,000 square feet. And that would give people a visual impact of what it's going to be like. And then if there's not a lot of <laughs> Uh, the heartburn over it to the neighbors, then we can expand it. So this is kind of my philosophy for, from 30,000 square feet because we also have to realize this is the political discussion. Last time we were discussing this, there are 50, 60 people here. They could scuttle the whole bylaw. Sure. Yeah. So that's what we have to look at as well. And <coughs> once again, I've said this many, many times, Zoning is that right of the individual owning the land versus the neighborhood. Can and you be and more that's that delicate balance we always talk about. Can you be more restrictive than the state allows? Well, the no, no. The state it, doesn't it, it have allows up to. The, let, let, let Mr. Well, the state doesn't have a, a, a limit. They, uh, well, they do have a limit. They, they, well, no, they don't, sorry. They have a limit, but it's not a limit on total size. Any single licensee can only grow 100,000 square feet of plant area. They use the word canopy. So if you had this table covered with plants or shelves, 
this size, you could have 100,000 square feet total of these tables. But that's one licensee. So if each one of us here gets a license in the same building, and there's one guy who's proposing it, he's proposing one and a half million square feet grow facility. It's sort of a build to suit sort of thing. Oh, so that would be, you know, 15 different tenants. And there was one that was approved years ago that's never really gotten off the ground, the same idea. Uh, down the southeastern that's exactly part of the state. That's the fear I have. It's not going to well, be Mr. Farmer, it's going to be a corporation so, is going to come in and take over. So, so the first one, the company is called American, and the can is C-A-N-N, get it like yeah. this. <laughs> and they're a Colorado company. They bought a property that um, the brewer, I think it was Sam Adams, put together to move you know, an enormous facility there, and they changed their mind, decided to stay where they are. So there was this huge land available off of 495, and it's kind of thing that, it's like an industrial park, right? I mean, there are industrial parks, and you drive down a highway, you have no idea there's a quarter million square foot plant behind the trees. I mean, that sort of thing. But it, so it depends on the location. Obviously, you're not going to want that out grown, you know, among the corn here. So the only thing I'll say is that the, and we have, it's, it's our next comment here, we talked about 2,500 square feet for retail, which is a different issue, but that explanation there, that note in JC20 talks about, and Johnny, this goes back to your comment, there's no, your question, there's no square footage limit uh, up or low, in other words, you know, a ceiling or at the high end, but um, you can have a bylaw that would have the effect of, um, making it unreasonably impracticable for somebody to have the business. And essentially what they mean is that the site is too small for anybody to make money off of it. So well, that's, that's, that's the old, but this is just we can regulate, retail. but we can That's for the prohibit. retail, but when Joe's talking about 4,000 square feet of a grow facility, is that too small? Oh, to be well, feasible? Oregon and Northern California have those types uh, of facilities even smaller than the fourth. They're small feet. craft growers. That's correct. They're the premium people. Yep. And that's what you're going to get. Here. So, yeah, so I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like you're talking about two different things. So one is the the outdoor grow, and keeping that small, and if somebody, if there's a, a warehouse, I mean, let's say there's not let's one of the malls gets dead again and somebody decides to um, grow inside what's now one of the large 100,000 square foot Areas. They're going to, Stephen has the comment, he said, they're not going to grow it outside. I mean, he's the residential expert now about growing it in, and they're not going to grow it outside. That was his comment. Well, okay, I'll be interested to hear The reason that we we'll grow it outside is if you think about all the rain we've recently had through August, through the fall, there's been a tremendous amount of bud rot, which is a disease that strawberries get and it's, it affects cannabis and you can't sell the product. Right. So coming back to the greenhouses, part of the greenhouse philosophy is to use natural sunlight. You could have blackout greenhouses which would shield the light um, and you would only have the light on for long periods of time during vegetative stages. Right. Um, so light should not be an issue. If you do it so that you say, okay, lights will be off by 8 or 9 o'clock at night, or come on during the early hours of the morning when nobody's up. There um, is so no such thing in Hadley if people aren't up early hours of the morning. Or <laughs> guarantee. <laughs> or they could black out. Yeah, yeah. Th there are yeah. structures you can get to black out everything within yeah. your that, that was a question, that um, was a comment I, that we put in here that was taken out. and. Um, under 30 physical requirements, 30 point lighting. You under yours, you've got uh, uh, 427 illumination. Four, units, all lighting shall be shielded. Zoning bylaws shall be shielded so not to light on the exempt property. Plan board will require any artificial lighting system to employ only LED components equipped with deflectors in order to mitigate potential light pollution. What does that mean? Well, the, so, you know, we didn't, in striking it out, we weren't trying to get rid of the concept, we were just phrasing it differently. So, 
All lighting shall comply with the zoning bylaw. Shall be shielded so as not to shed light onto adjacent property. Thirty point four point two point seven. So, shielded. We, we, had, we had put in there security lighting shall comply with eight point section eight point eight point nine of the bylaw. Well, this is now here. We're not talking about security lighting. I know. Yeah, that, that was my original comment that was removed. The security oh. lighting is different than the right. We're talking about two different things, but we were I, talking two different things. I just so I don't think we didn't eliminate anything. We just rephrased things. So I if, disagree. We got rid of that entirely. I disagree. My comment: security lighting shall comply. That's fine. Section four thirty point four point two point six. You've left it and and 935 CMR. Yeah. That's fine. 430.4.2.7. Yeah. You said lighting shall comply with the zoning bylaw and be shielded so as not to shed light onto adjacent properties. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Well, it means you can't that the neighbors can't see it. That's not what it says. Well, it can't. It's open, it's open so, to interpretation. So it's not to shed light onto. So so not only can they not see it. Well, the, they, they can't see it. I mean, but, but, well, but don't they not, talk but, about the sky? I mean, that's when you're talking about the blackout. Well, um, yeah, but, but and my, mine was simply, yours, but my opinion, my, the one we had was more clear. Illumination utilized for growing purposes shall be shielded so as not to be visible to neighboring properties and to the sky above. That was removed. Yeah. The, I, I think... So yours, yours is absolute, I guess. This yes. Is, and I guess the concern with that, and I didn't make that change, the concern with that is that it may be impossible to meet. Not if you build it inside of a black wear, a black a building. Yeah. I mean, basically what it's saying is you can't use a plastic clear old coop house. Yeah. So what, the way we wrote it is, so as not to shed light onto adjacent properties, I mean, yeah, but, I mean, but, but the neighboring property, your language. But, but the neighboring property can see it. Like I said, yeah, to, to the sky, so that neighbors can't see it. But if it, but if it's open to the sky above, yeah. Like I said, I live eight miles from Joe's greenhouses. Well, not Joe's greenhouses, but his neighbor. And there's a mountain in between us, and I can see that at some time when it lights up the sky. And that's yeah. not an exaggeration. That's a fact. Yeah. What color is that one? Pardon? What red. color? Red? It, red. It, it, it. Yeah. So let me call in a little bit. The red ones are a ribbon, or like a rope, and they shine all around them. So that they are radiating to the top. Like these lights here are radiating down. The, the bird lights that you would use in a greenhouse for cannabis wouldn't be those LED red lights that you see in the sky, because we see them as well. Um, these point downward, and the idea is that the light does go down, does not go up. And I have some pictures showing greenhouses. Yeah, you can see the illuminated greenhouse, but it's in the snow, and the footprint out from the greenhouse is just a few feet. It's not raining out. But nothing that way? Yeah, well, there's very little goes up um, because you're shielding. Yeah, I have a brochure with the shielding that shows the type of lights that cannabis growers use, and they are shielded around, the bulb is underneath and the light comes down, it's reflected down, not up. But it still reflects down and goes up, and it still reflects up. Uh, radiation going off the leaf is only about 10%. It, yeah, it, but it, it basically, it, lighting is, when you will shine light down, it's going to bounce up to a certain extent, I agree. And it's going to radiate up. It, I mean, to well, say that you could direct light to a certain point and not see it other yeah, places. Yeah, but you're is, only talking about a greenhouse, not a building. But the, what I'm saying is, these buildings, the if they're built, if the greenhouses, the hoop houses, whatever you want to call them, are near a couple hundred feet from a residence, and the lights are on at any time during the night, you're going to go outside and you're going to see this illuminated well thing in front of you. At this point, I think we're having a technical conversation. Right. I'm not competent to... Okay, we'll see. We're, we're getting into too much detail. No, no, yeah. Yeah, Let I, me say one thing about outdoor growers before I forget. Going into this two years ago, I thought that outdoor growing is not going to happen in, in Massachusetts. But because they're not going to be able to compete with the people who are going to go 24-7 and you know, go in the old warehouses and whatever it's going to be. What I've learned at different meetings, different planning boards is 
the local farmers showing up and saying, you know, and, and this season obviously would have been a challenging one, but saying, look, you know, I grow corn, tomatoes, lettuce, whatever. If I can have a half acre of marijuana, take my chances with it like I do any other crop. Well, we can't call him a farmer if he's growing marijuana. <laughs> Still a farmer. He's He's, a this farmer. guy's a real farmer. Isn't that true, Jimmy? You can't he, crawl? He, this is somebody, correct, correct the council. We, this, <laughs> this is somebody who's growing tomatoes, so that makes him a farmer or corn. But the point being uh, that this farmer might be looking for the half acre of a cash crop and take his chances on the climactic conditions, get the fans out maybe, get, get you know, particularly wet season. Just that there will be. so. Uh, to my great surprise, we, we represent half the Cape Towns. I don't do any work down there. But the little town of Truro, right next to Provincetown, it's got these small growers who are just mad to, to go and do this craft growing. And they've had this real tussle back and forth. And we've come up with this lengthy bylaw that's going to allow for these small craft growers to grow marijuana along with whatever else they've been growing. Um, you know, just for the, the boost to the bottom line if, if they can get a crop. Look, so. if you have to weigh in on it, I, I look at it, we have several options. Number one option is to take this growing paragraph out for the time being and pass a, a bylaw that, and then address this separately. So that's one option. Option number two would be kind of my compromise, the 4,000 square feet, whether indoors or outdoors, and uh, have our regulations to cover it. And option number three was, are the no holds barred? You know, it was up to 100,000 square feet of greenhouses and 100,000 square feet of open land. Uh, so that's obviously, I think I'm yielding for the compromise situation to see how it goes because Everybody's jumping into this. You have no idea what's going to happen. Oh, I have a great idea. Oh, no, what's going to happen. Yeah, but I have so many Okay, well, that, yeah. I'm interested in your opinion because... No, but I, I have... You're right. I'm sorry. I, could, I, I jumped in too soon. I have no idea what it's going to look like, but I, I do have a, a big idea of how many communities are opting in. You know, the press is writing up all the communities that are saying no and have moratorium and all of that. But there are dozens of communities. I'd say a third of the Berkshires already have said yes and have passed by once they want. This is like every town having a brewery. I mean, can you use it all? It's a question. Well, you know, I'm wondering about these craft breweries, how long they're all going to last. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's not every town. But, but yeah, we don't. I, I agree with you 100%. We have no idea how it's going to happen. You know, in Canada, which went legal, um, in Toronto, there were just two, I just read this over the weekend. There were two or three shops that were open, and after seven days, they had no product. They had to close because they um, they got wiped out. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, but if this are we going to make away, that decision tonight, Jim? We're not going to think about it. No. Hey, no. Joe, if yes. this gets away on us, how do we regroup from that? Well, th th I I agree with you. I, that's why I don't want to say. Let it all go. 100,000 square feet of right. greenhouses, or 100,000 square feet. No, can, um, can we? Can we? We've approved marijuana. Can we say no growing allowed in Hadley, but only selling? So you can, but you need a ballot question. Oh, we did. What we do need so a ballot. There, there are the four ballot. basic types of marijuana establishments. If you want to ban any one of them, you need a ballot question for that. Oh, okay. So we, we can't. So, we can't ban. Basic. Well, you can, but, but you can go through a lot. I doubt yeah. it would pass. Right. Okay. So, um, so to Joe's suggestion, and I, I don't necessarily, I'm not saying necessarily the board goes along with it. My concern with a 4,000 foot limit on growing is that the AG might say it's tantamount to a prohibition because, I mean, 4,000 feet outdoor growing, I could see, but um, 4,000 feet indoor growing, I think they'd say it's tantamount to a pro prohibition. Then you need a, yeah. a the reason I said 4,000 square feet, a uh, tobacco barn, an eight bin tobacco mm -hmm. barn is roughly, it's a little less but 4,000 square feet, so people could visualize how big that would be. That's, yeah. I, I, would it be not a hard and fast Would rule. it be advisable for us to prohibit growing to see how other towns cope with this and the repercussions of it? Yes, but we need a ballot question. Well, to do so that. what? So if we go to get a ballot question at the go to the uh, Springtown meeting, 
And if the people vote no, they don't want it, then no, they don't want it. But if they do yes, then it's going to get us more time and see what actually happens out there. So I don't right. think so, because we only have our moratorium through spring town meetings, so we June. June. Well, but if the town meeting say. votes not to grow it, we have to have a bylaw ready to go because if the town, it's fine. If the town meeting votes not to grow it and it backs it up with the ballot, that's fine. But if we don't have a bylaw ready to go at the same time and they go the other way, we're really just swinging the wind out there. Joe, Joe made a good point at the town meeting, the fact that if we continue to extend the, the moratorium, extend it, extend it, in effect, we're prohibiting or overruling the, yeah. the vote, correct? And yeah, well, this is, this is your last extension. Assuming you get it, Bill, I saw what you did by way of history, which I think will help. But you know, nobody's going to get an extension after yeah. this June, that's yeah. for sure. Okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, unless something drastic. Can you put changes. just where the medical marijuana is? I mean, that would be, you could grow it in the industrial business zone if it's essentially classified as a business, and that would be a place to start until That's you work idea. out a little bit more of exactly That's an idea. So where it might what? be a good place or how okay. far away from a house it should be. Because, I mean, someone's house, even, I mean, I wasn't here for the meeting where the 300 feet was discussed, but that might be okay in some houses, but if you have no trees and you're straight on 300 feet, you're going to see a lot, smell a lot. You know, if the back of your property backs up to 116 or uh, the river on the other side, who cares about the 300 foot rear setback because they're just nature back there, but... You know, I, I, I would like to see maybe some modifications to that distance from a house where these, if we're going to put it in at res, um, because, you know, it's, even though it's agricultural, it's still a drug. And you can't get it unless you're 21. So it's not a tomato or a piece of corn that you're going to give to your five-year-old. I think we need to put a little more care into exactly where we're putting a facility like this and to put it in the agricultural residential zone anywhere, 300 feet next to anybody's house, is still pretty close. And so um, yeah, yeah, I know you guys are really fighting with this and it's a really a tough issue and I appreciate all of your work on it. Um, I know that there were uh, probably 50 people here at the last public hearing, mm -hmm. and the Red Sox were on. We probably would have had more if it wasn't a, you know, World Series playoff game. Um, and there was a lot of people at town meeting from the same neighborhood, and, and everybody was very concerned. And I know you need two thirds of a vote to make this fly. And I can tell you, if it doesn't change and it stays in Agres and it's potentially near a lot of these houses there will be a lot of people coming out to vote against it, and I want it to pass in, in, in a way that works right now, and then... Well, Lisa, just we because you want it, it that doesn't mean the rest of the community wants it. It's the same thing with me. No, but... Right? Well, if you put it in the business zone, potentially, I mean, we already have medical marijuana. I look at this, no matter medicine. where we're going to put it in this town, Somebody is going to complain. Yeah. Well, it, it's or, always a complaint, right. but it's better that they complain now so we can regulate. Yeah. The, the basic thing is, Joe, how far can we regulate as when it becomes prohibition? Remember, I had this beaten into me by Betty Carada, Ken versus Doug. I'll read it again, read it again. And how far setback? Uh, how small the building, how small the plot, and that's what we're going to have to wrestle with. And yeah. let's see. Well, I think Lisa makes a good point. I mean, you do have, you know, the more business and industrial zones where, where you can allow the indoor grow. I mean, we're talking about two different things here. One is the, let's call it the industrial grow facilities. Yeah. And I mean, because you've got buildings there now that have over a thousand square foot. And once they're enclosed, and the, the CCC regs are pretty pretty strict in terms of the indoor facilities and containing odors and all that. And I'm told, I don't know sir, if you know, but I'm told the technology for controlling odors for the indoor growth facilities is... is yeah, so it's, it's using carbon filters. That was a, the, the last page on the package that you have. <laughs> um, 
And you can essentially do that in greenhouses too. It would be every 28 minutes, every 30 minutes to exchange all the air through a filter through an enclosed greenhouse. If, if, if and it's meeting. only odors at certain times of the year during the flowering season. Mm -hmm. if, if town meeting rejects the zoning bylaws proposed by this board, can the AG come in and say this is what you're going to do? No, it's not the AG. If town meeting rejects the bylaw and you don't regulate marijuana at all, anywhere where you allow retail, somebody can open a pot shop. Anywhere where agriculture is allowed under your bylaw, they can grow it yeah. um, and so forth. Any any place where industrial manufacturing... They'll do it by right then. They'll do it by right. So, so rejecting a bylaw that we bring forward is a lot of risk. Right, and I think a lot of the residents, they were all here, they were all at town meeting to make sure the moratorium went through. I'm sure they'll be at spring town meeting. I mean, we kind of figured out, we kind of talked about our neighborhood and about how many houses, and there's probably like $65 billion worth of real estate up there. Like, everybody's concerned about their property values, their families, people moved up there because they did not want, you know, a industrial facility in their neighborhood. Do you, so you think anybody's smoking up the marijuana up there tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Can we, can we require, like the medical marijuana, we require it to be done in a fully enclosed building and not visible from the exterior of the business. Can we require that for regular adult use? Yeah. I mean, that, that allows agriculture. In other words, what you're asking is, can you allow it only indoors and not outdoors. Yes. I think so. Okay. We, we don't, so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get to the point where we allow something Yeah. and it's controlled to a relatively smaller area but still permitted in town. Yeah. And to Joe's point for others, down the road, how is it working out in other towns? Is there really an order? Does it really smell? Does it really, does it do this? Does it do that? And then down the road we open it up to other things. When you start with something. Start with exactly. And right here, I'm saying this is this is direct wording from from medical marijuana. All aspects of the facility used to use relative to acquisition, cultivation, possession, processing, sales, distribution, dispensing, administrative of marijuana product containing marijuana related supplies, etc., 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 shall be in a fixed location within a fully enclosed building and shall not be visible from the exterior of the business. The same sort of language goes for outside in the CCC regulation, that you cannot be walking by and visibly see it without binoculars. You can see the building, but you're not seeing what's well, in it. You're not seeing the the greenhouses. You're, right. not, you're not allowed to be able to discern plants growing just by casually walking along the street, okay. unless you use F a fully enclosed office. building would mean a fully enclosed building, not not a, not a hoop house, not a greenhouse, right. nothing like that. You can see the building. You, you can, can see the building, but you can't building. see what's inside of it, and you can't see light on the outside of it. Yes. But the vote you took in that large meeting said that it has to have 300 feet setback, even around that building on all sides. Yeah, I, I, again, you heard me, I disagree with that. Right. I okay. I think a 300 foot setback for a residence is reasonable. Yes. And for 300 so feet from all, outside dwelling. For, for any, e even for regular building, but 300 feet from all boundary lines is not reasonable. Because right. you then, the 300 foot setback from all boundary lines forces it into ag residential. Yes. Because there's very, I can only think of about three or four business property that you could grow it in, in town. All the rest would force it into ag residential. But if you're in a facility, it's then enclosed. it could be taken care of with, with scrubbers or what, to clean yeah. the smell or anything. Yeah. It can in a greenhouse too. What? It can in a greenhouse as well. Yeah. I mean, well, I do have a business on the time, and if a place came in next to me, I'd deal with it. If a place came in next to my house, I'd freak out. You know, I mean, they're two separate entities. You know, yeah. it's business, you expect lights or some smell or some noise or something, and in a residential neighborhood, you don't expect that. You don't yeah. expect lights all the, the time. Way, the way it's worded in here, medical growing facility shall be located on a lot. No, I'm sorry, we reword it. No growth facility. They use buzzwords. They use um, 
uh, call it, analogies in here. No facility shall be located on a lot which abuts a residential use, including commercial residential you, that uses such as hotels, motels, lodging houses, or residential zoning district. You're reading out of the, the Me medical? Medical marijuana. Well, I suggest we move on. Right. But you have, um, we, we've got some, some ideas here. Yeah, yeah something that you want. Okay. Okay. Um, hmm. Okay. All right, so then we're on the location, section 30.4.3. Um, all right, so then you get into the 300 feet, so you've discussed that yeah. sufficiently. All we've done there, uh, yeah, oh, well, so we just make the comment, the NJC 21, that, um, so the statute, of course, has buffer zones from places where education, you know, pre-existing schools, K through 12, and it doesn't talk about any other kind of buffer zone, so we don't know, you know, how the Attorney General will react to any other kind of buffer zone. Uh, Would a church be involved in that or not? No, the statute only talks about um, education. education. Yeah. Other towns have put in others, and we haven't seen if the Attorney General has been approved. I think some have been approved. Been approved? No, that's my understanding. I think you're probably right, because it's been a while. Yeah, the Springtown meetings would have had some. Yeah. How about a mosque? Uh, that's a, that's a church. If we have a mosque coming into town, they're going to have children's education or religion. Well, we, we had we I mean, that conversation, yeah, because yeah. it was in, within two hours. You're beyond the 300 foot uh, you know, what The adult use one doesn't have that uh, restriction to where children congregate. Okay. So uh, it, it clearly does not include the ice cream window at Friendly's or yep. church schools or anything like that. It's just classic K through 12 educational. E so even daycares don't come. Yeah. Right. Starts at K. Yeah. Um, so Let me just ask if I can hear. And <clears throat> Is it, is it my sense that, based on what you just talked about, is that you want to limit the growth of marijuana solely for medical purposes, and that growth should be only within the inside of a, of a no. compartment? No, 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 no. I was reading from the existing medical marijuana bylaw how they regulate what rural facilities can be. Right. Just as an example. As an example, where we may want to tune that wording for well, this for the time being for the adult grow uses. We've already adopted a medical marijuana by law. Right. right. So this okay. is purely on the adult use, the commercial use. You know, to start, rather than going it everywhere in town, if we just use similar wording for the adult use until we find out the lay of the land for adult growing, then down the road we could possibly open it up to other areas. Events such as recreational use. Well, that wouldn't be recreational. Recreation is already approved. So we're using now, adult use, recreational use, okay. and commercial use interchangeably. Okay. Yes. Okay. As opposed to medical, because medical was the first one that was adopted. Okay. And then now the adult use has been adopted. But adult, recreational, and commercial are, are the same thing. We, we use it to, yeah. We, we don't mean to confuse it. The terms to us are the same thing. Right. Okay. It's either medical or other. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. And so, I mean, there's still on the table the possibility of allowing uh, farmers, or however you want to describe them, to grow uh, outside. That was the original idea. Right. But we're we're finding we're we're having lots of thoughts on that at the time being because of, of all kinds of issues, the odors and smells and lighting. The situation that we face, though, is that roughly three quarters of the town is zoned agricultural residential, where farming is allowed and houses are allowed. And what Lisa was talking about was, was cutting back just to the business and industrial districts, which are functionally just below Route 9. Mm -hmm. And that has the benefit of putting a commercial use in a commercial district, the drawback is it disenfranchises, if you will, a lot of farmers who are the logical people to do the craft growing. Right, and also the land on Route 9 
It's probably the poorest agricultural land in town. It's clay. Well, as an example, I own property on Honey Pot, and we were thinking about the possibility of growing marijuana there, you know, provided we comply with the rules and regulations. Uh, my sense is that that would not be possible based, based on your thinking at the moment. No. Or if it's possible, it's, it's a way down the road. It, it, we don't know. We, 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 you, you're, here, you're listening to our concerns. Right. And well, to, to Joe, we've got to satisfy, we've got to find the middle of the line where we only upset 50% of the people here, 50% of the people here, so that nobody's going to be satisfied. Sure. Or very few, let's put it this way. Most people and most, it's not a win-win situation. It's a half-win on everybody's part. Oh, by the way, you can only upset a third of the people because you need a two-thirds vote. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but that's, right. but they, that's a good shot. That yeah. potential third has to be educated that if it doesn't go through, then all bets are off. So and free for all. It, Wild it's West. not, this isn't a just say no yeah. um, yeah. option here. This, this, this is the first time we've ever run into a, a situation where if we do nothing, we're in the deep doo doo. But if it doesn't go through, it can't go on ag res because it's a business use. No, it can go exactly. anywhere. Well, no, all agricultural, all agriculture is a business use. Right? Yeah. Is that but it's a free. It, it can be called a business use, and I had to go on a business. No, farm. no, no, no. Like it is not considered. What is not considered is agricultural by right. But if you have no laws regulating it, it can be done anywhere, anyway. Except we're still not on APR. Except, except, on, on except APR. it can't be going on APR. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that clause in the enabling legislation is just to take it out of the agricultural exemption of Chapter 40A. Right. So it, it doesn't, it, it's not exempt and a farmer can do whatever they want with it, like putting up a 20,000 square foot dairy farm with a lagoon. Um, but it is allowed in the agricultural district. Now, it's only not allowed on APR land until a federal government decides it is still a class one drug and it's not allowed. But if they ever change that rule in a federal government, then it can be grown on APR land. It would That's be a pretty no, sketchy I, opinion that hmm? are. I haven't heard that before. But anyway, we, we don't want to. Okay. All right, moving on. All right, okay. Um, I'll send you the email. I would love, actually, I'd like to see it. Yeah, I'd very much like to see it because I don't know that anybody in the office had heard that. Oh, um, yeah. You what? Certainly, we have heard that. Yeah, yeah. okay. Probably from me. No, I Okay, yeah. moving on. Um, Page what? So, well, we were on. We were at, let's look at the, our comment, the NJC 21. So that's the one where we were just talking about the 20 foot setbacks. The next page or so is just, is really just a lot of formatting stuff. There's really nothing to look at till we get to, um, uh, well then to the next page, we get to the 365 day issue, which we talked about. So now I'm looking at, if you look at NJC comment 23, um, well, no, look at 24. That's the one where we've got the inconsistency with ceases to operate. But I think you talked about that earlier, where right. you're going to fix the other one, the 60-day one. So then it won't be, that won't be an issue. Um, so again, the, um, all right, then the next comment is uh, comment number 27, where you have a bond requirement. So this is just a, a policy issue for you to consider. So what our comment says is the Cannabis Control Commission regulations already require an escrow account to cover the disposal of plants. Towns can impose additional security. So you can have a look at that, but the question is, you know, do you want to get in the business of having your own bond requirement? Anytime you collect a bond, then the purpose of the bond is to allow you to go in and clean it up if they walk away. And we always caution, and it's in our comment here, either this one or the next one, we always caution that you don't have the right to go in. Ultimately, if somebody walks and you've got the bond money, you have to go to court to get an administrative order to let the town to go in and spend the money to clean up whatever needs to be cleaned up. Good point. So, I mean, it's, it's something for you to consider. 
um, you can look or we can send you the CCC regulations and see if you find. Well, why look for that kind of trouble? I yeah, think I, we'll, we'll I can speak for the treasurer that <laughs> one more bond would not be. <laughs> uh, would, would, she'd would rather not welcome? have to deal with bonding. No, no. Um, uh, what is the option if we don't do that? Well, it, the, it will rot. No, no. The cannabis commission requires that they have that um, any provider have an escrow account to cover the disposal of plants. Now, not the whole building and facility. I mean, you're not right. going to take down the building. You're just going to you're interested in getting out the plants. You want to get rid of the, the, the junk inside. Yeah. yeah. And so, so how, we, how we dealt with it on the medical marijuana side was we had the applicant speak with the police chief. This police chief figured out based on the amount of product that would be in the facility how long would it take two officers on private detail rates to take hold of dispose all product of in there? And dispose of it? And dispose of it, or at least okay. pull it out of the of the <laughs> pull it out of the site. <laughs> We're all thinking um, we'll eat it or smoke it. So, so that that was how we, we mechanically worked out it, and it turned out to be not hugely expensive for clearing out a medical marijuana dispensary where the operators had walked away. It probably I think it was less than five thousand dollars. So that's a, um, I had heard some other towns. Excuse me, gentlemen, I have to leave. I've got to catch a flight tomorrow morning at seven to Houston, so <laughs> okay. okay. Well, Happy you take good notes out. Happy flying. Uh, the state's um, escrow was capped at five thousand, and other towns were. Some other towns are concerned that that's enough. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's just us. That yeah, the CCC requires an escrow bond type thing to be set up. Right. But I think there's a cap. Question is, is it capped? So with the, the single medical dispensary that we were dealing with, that was something where the police chief estimated it would take two officers three hours and their private detail rate was X number of dollars. And then the product would be brought to the station and eventually disposed of according to police department protocols for dealing oh, with. So what is that, uh, escrow account? I think that one is a bond, but they haven't posted it because they haven't offer open for business yeah. yet. Um, but that was the that was the mechanism we used for figuring out how to do it. Um, I can see where, in the agricultural context, it could be a depending on how large the site is, it could be a much costlier proposition. Well, we got rid of it before by simply using a, a cord cutter. Grinding it up. Yeah. There was a farmer growing marijuana between his cornfield. Oh, really? And uh, it was just ground up with a corn cutter and blown over the field. Mm. There is some residual growth left over from the seeds, however. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Good marijuana people won't have seeds because they don't want the seeds. That knows the value of it. Well, hip does. Hemp does, yes. yes. That's why you can't have hemp and marijuana grown together. Mm -hmm. Maybe it has some hemp mixed in. <laughs> yeah, or males. Yeah, I don't know um, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, we can. Someone, another town said. Well, we can have a closer look at that. Um, I don't think that's a big, big problem. Getting rid of the stocks in. No, I. So I don't think we should worry about a bond there. So yeah, it looks like the rest of the comments are fairly yes, fairly minor. I, I think we really have hit the oh. the high points. There is one minor, um, just an edit. So on that same page where the N NJC twenty seven comment is. So pa what page are you on? Um, well, page numbers are different. It's page nine, eight or nine. So nine, nine on mine. It's uh, thirty point four point five point six. Yeah. Yeah, we just want to hear. But 
Yeah. So we're, we're done with that. I'm looking at the, the very next one, 5.7. Okay. Minor thing, I know there's some words we're missing, so let me just read it. The initial special permit issue of the section should be valid for a period of one year, and subsequent rules be valid for two years. Okay, next sentence. If no complaints have been received after two successive renewals, then there will be, and it says no further renewals. I think what you want to say, no need for further Correct. renewals. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's the same we did on that. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the next page, application requirements, section 30.5. Um, we actually let's see what you did here. Again. Yeah, uh, in the um, yeah, warrant article, you see we deleted a lot of language in 30.5. And the warrant article is much shorter. It just says complete applications for special permit site plan approvals from marijuana establishments will be processed in the order that they are filed with the town, period. In addition to the standard application requirements for special permits and site plan approvals, such applications for marijuana establishments shall include the following, and then you get into it. So the um, all of that language that we've struck here, we took out. Um, the language there is, you know, choosing among people, uh, among applicants, I guess. Uh, some of it's already captured also. So you might want to revisit that language to, um, what about revision of language for what again? Though? Well, so that first long paragraph of 30.5, right. right. we recommended taking up most of the text, and then what you went to town meeting with actually takes out all of that text. Yes. So I don't know if you're happy with it being gone, but that was. Well, if, it, if it's kind of given, then that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so basically what happened was we did get all of your comments. Jim took half, had half a day to okay. try to work them into the Warren article, uh, but that still didn't answer some of the questions we had. Sure. Uh, and and yeah. I, again, I think just we, you've really sort of focused in on the two big issues, which really comes to where it's going to be allowed and how how close to uh, other properties will it be allowed? Um, well, and, and but you've left out a third ingredient that <clears throat> uh, that's really key, and that is what kinds of controls can you impose on these facilities so that proximity won't have to be the concern that you know we all think it might be and. The problem is we don't really know, and this gentleman has a lot of information suggesting that the technology is there to allow for greater proximity, certainly as to enclosed facilities. Um, and you know, open fields, you know, will always have some odor yeah, issues. Yeah, I, but, I think of what uh, no, but modern greenhouses with the technology that was described, you know, could be. I mean, obviously, so some bylaws, for example, that allow. Um, greenhouse growing have language the effect it has to look like a you know typical New England agricultural structure. So you're not going to get a metal shed in the middle of a cornfield. And the other language controls the technology that's going to deal with odor in particular and lighting and that sort of thing. So I think if we start off with allowing it in the business and industrial zones um, in the building. In the building and forget the 300 foot to a residence because if it looks like a building and it's next to a, you know, if there's a house nearby and it's not really impeding them right now, yeah, then, then for the time being, that's a good start. Yeah. After a couple of years, we see 
what we said before, the lay of the land with other areas and open grow and the rest of the stuff, are all the fears valid? Right. Are they? If they are, and great. If you're, they're not. And you're going to hear about uh, incidents in other communities. Absolutely. Right. Oh, you're going right. to, there's going to be right. lots. <laughs> Look it's going to be a lawyer's field. You know, you know and, and, and then we can, okay, now, yeah, the farmers, unfortunately, that have, that wanted to open grow or put it in a, uh, you know, whatever, next to certain areas, they're not going to be able to. But better to start small and expand yep. Yep. than make have a disaster on their hands. And if you do that, you'll, you won't be prohibiting agriculture. So, uh, and right. the same, you have yeah, manufacturing in the same areas. So mm -hmm. you'll be allowing all of the uses right. somewhere in town on a reasonable basis. Yeah. Yeah, it's just that. So if, a couple of questions I have. Uh, I know Bill clarified the APR provision, the fact that it's federal money is involved in funding APR, so it's not allowed on APR land. But I was under the opinion that the Cannabis Commission said that marijuana is not to be considered agricultural. No, so that's what Bill was talking to earlier. So it was actually only APR section, no, or no, a APR is one issue, but entirely right. separate from that was the First Amendment to so the marijuana law. You know, it was question four in the ballot in 2016. Got voted in November, actually two years ago. Then, like six weeks later, the legislature made two amendments. One was they pushed back all of the deadlines six months. Hmm. And the other is they added like five or six lines that says, where it says in the Zoning Act, in Chapter 40, Section 3, that agriculture must be permitted on all land of five or more acres um, zoned for agricultural uses. So any town that has AR or whatever means you have to allow agriculture. So, so that's agriculture by right, you know, all over most parts, of the, I mean, all over the entire state where there are, where there's land that fits that description. They added a sentence essentially saying, when we say agriculture, we don't include marijuana. So all it did was it excluded marijuana from getting the benefit of the agricultural exemption statewide. But it had no effect on local zoning bylaws. So when in the Hadley zoning bylaw, when you say in every other zoning bylaw, you can say agriculture is allowed anywhere on two acres or five acres, um, then Hadley's allowing it. It's not the state zoning act, it's Hadley. So your, your zoning bylaw was not affected by that change. Oh, okay. So, so it wouldn't have the, oh, I'm smiling, the Dover Amendment qualification for agriculture. Exactly. But if you allow it under the so that's exactly right. But but where you allow it generously around town, it's still allowed. Good point. Thank you for clarifying. So you that. know, under the state statute, yeah, marijuana is not agricultural. Correct. But within Hadley, if you allow agricultural, yeah, you need to allow marijuana. That's right. That's right. Now the lands that are, so we're, you know, I'm learning tonight that the lands that are protected that were acquired with, you know, state APR funds, um, then those evidently, this theory says that, you know, federal, because of the use of federal funds, we can't use APR lands. But, but that's separate. That's not all a farm. I mean, any farmland that anybody in the room owns is not APR farmland. Okay. Well, so, so, using so I the, want to go over this one again because it's yeah. still not clear. So using the agricultural exemption under 40A, uh, if we said that agriculture was not allowed in the business district uh, because of it creates dust and we don't want dust in the business district, someone using the 40A agricultural exemption on a five acre park, five acre parcel? Yeah. Uh, well, and then there's a two acre clause as well. But, but yeah. using that exemption, they can say, well, I'm going to farm in the business district anyway. Okay. Because I have the agricultural exemption. Or I am going to put a pig farm in the residential district because I have the agricultural exemption. Yeah. Um, the business district, I'm looking to see if I can pull a statute up. Wouldn't work. The land, it has to be land that's owned agriculture. 
So something that's zoned at AR is zoned for agriculture. In fact, I think right. everything except our residential district allows agriculture. Right. Now, <clears throat> getting back to marijuana. So if we do nothing, they could grow marijuana in any agricultural district. Correct. But if we adopt this bylaw and we say for the time being you could only grow marijuana in a business or industrial districts and not agricultural, we're okay. I'm sorry, say that again. If, if we adopt this bylaw with wording that says adult use marijuana can only be grown in business or industrial zones yeah. and no place else, right. that is okay. That's right. Because you're allowing it. Yeah. And, and okay. you're overriding the otherwise the agricultural right. use elsewhere. In the district, so the growing of, of marijuana is prohibited in all districts except for here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I've got 48 three years. Yeah. You're you're not, you're not, we're not not allowing it. Right. Allowing uh, but, but we need to we need to put something in to allow it somewhere. Right. Well, the other question, Jim, we're going to have to clarify is. Only inside a building, or do we want to let? Not outside grown. Yeah. Not outside grown. Not outside grown. Yeah, For now, we, yeah, we, we 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 need to discuss that. But at least we got the ground rules from Joel. That, I mean, we're not far from. We got most of the stuff in here is okay, with the exception of the growing area. That's what we got to work on. Yeah. And and we. So the question is, inside or outside grow? Again, how do you? Limit the people that this want to grow it in their backyard. I, I, I think those are they may in a year or two be well, changed. I will. Well, those ten plants are going in anyway. Yeah. That's correct. Well, that's right. Yeah. The, the, we the, have nothing to say about yeah. that. Anybody that wants, wants to grow the ten or twelve plants or whatever it is, they can do that. Period. I think that's what that, that's not our concern. That our concern is the hundred thousand square feet or whatever. So, is there anything like? something like a craft deal or something in a small quantity well that's more than 10 plants to be outside because well, that's, plants that's what be, i'm, I'm 10 plants could be grown outside right two thousand square feet four thousand square feet no not that big if smaller. we say strictly business or industrial we're pretty much prohibiting we're not just regulating because there's if you really knew the zoning in Hadley, you can't grow no. anything out of business. It doesn't industry. necessarily yeah, mean that you have to grow it in every spot in the town. Yeah, but nobody is nobody is going to, if, if we're calling for indoor growth, no one is going to be plowing up industrial land to grow marijuana. It's going to be in a, um, it's going to be in a pot. In a warehouse. In a warehouse. In a warehouse, yeah. That Hadley is an agricultural town. It seems counterintuitive to restrict it from agricultural land. That's right. However, the last thing we want to do that we've said before is allow it, in, allow it like we said before, and it turns into to be a disaster. And it gets out of hand. And it gets out of hand because then to pull it back, we have learned the hard way. It is almost impossible. If we start very restrictive and we want to expand it, experience has said, that is much easier. We're just being so, and I will take all the heat for all the farmers in the land to do that because there's so many. It, it, it's just common sense that that's what we're going to do. It's all but being cautious. That's right. Yes. But there are ways to be cautious if you have good setbacks from houses. 300 feet from a road, 300 feet from a residence. This didn't happen. From, so, so this is this, this is actually it's been a very interesting conversation because you know we have a very energized group of people who would be as I'm sure they'd be prepared to vote as a block against the bylaw, but maybe if the bylaw <clears throat> said okay, we'll allow it in the agricultural residential district, but with these limits and that did not sit well with an energized block and with an open town meeting when a block comes <clears throat> they kind of run the meeting um, yet we're also hearing that if that block voted against the bylaw that restricted growth in agricultural residential districts and the bylaw did not pass then all restrictions are off 
Right. It could be anywhere. And it could be anywhere. So that that is going to be, that, that's the real conundrum here about how, um, you know, what, how we're going to juggle that because every other bylaw we've ever had to deal with it was voted down the penalty is it just won't happen this one is the a hundred percent opposite of that if you vote it down it's open season and so to Bill's point and everything we've been talking about is we've got to be very careful how we do this because this one could be a very lose-lose situation if it's not done right. So, okay. It's okay. either careful or careless. <laughs> that's, that's, that's right. That, that's a, a good point. At uh, what point, if you put on a ballot question and didn't allow it, like say it got voted down at the town meeting, and then could you put it on the next ballot? And what if you then the town decides they don't want it? What happens then? If they yeah. didn't approve it at town meeting and then the town brings it to the next election. So let, let's so the town meeting's in early May. Uh, the planning board brings forward uh, a bylaw along the lines that we're discussing that allows some of all of the uses. If that doesn't get a two thirds vote, then the moratorium expires end of June, I think, two thousand nineteen. Then as of July one it's open season, people can come anywhere. So uh, then if somebody wants to put together uh, a prohibition bylaw, they'd have to get a bylaw passed through a special town meeting and also have to get a special election or wait a whole year uh, to get a ballot question passed. I, I think, Joe, on this you thing. Need, you need both. You need. A, Zoning bylaw that prohibits it by two thirds vote and then a ballot question by majority vote. I think this, though, if it was explained like basically, if this doesn't pass, it's a free for all, and people will strongly reject that. This can happen anywhere in my neighborhood, behind my house, anywhere. I don't think you'll ever see that kind of stuff allowed yeah. to happen. What was so, no. let me just make one suggestion. So. We're here at the beginning of November, town meeting is whatever, five, six months off. So you may want to have another one of those large meetings. Um, and I mean, A forum on it. A forum is exactly right. the right word, yeah. I mean, first, you know, you all want to discuss it and, you know, get a firmer idea of, you know, do that you want the 4, point, square yeah. feet or do you want the, the commercial, you know, where the, the commercial industrial districts and put together, and so you wouldn't be discussing the 12-page bylaw in detail, you'd be discussing the the, the hot-button issues, Correct. basically. Right. Yeah. And the highlights. Yeah. The highlights. Yeah. Right. Okay. So let me ask the board, well, I'm sure Mike wouldn't disagree too much, but I think most of them are going to be there. I'll work with Susan to put together basically something in the ag, no, no, in the business and industrial zones for now in an enclosed building and work in that kind of wording. And of course, we'll clean up all the other details that Joel talked about. You, you've got to get us some information, we'll work on that one. That's a, that's a much easier yep. topic to correct. Okay. So that way for the next, at least the next time that Susan gets here, we can have something that we can go over. We'll go back and forth a few times with the stuff and we'll just, you and I just hash it out together through emails and stuff and have sure. something kind of a draft. But before that next meeting, we get that a week or two before so we can, each member can sit down. Oh, this will not be something we're going to give you that night. We like to, we like to right. have it like a week or so ahead of time because, yeah, exactly. I agree. You don't want to have it that night all of a sudden. What's this? Right. Yeah. So and even if it's. Your thinking process is that you would not allow for uh, growth in an agricultural area, even though it would be. Grown internally. That's correct. That's that's to be discussed. That, 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 that's to be discussed. That's you're gonna. Yeah. You want to review certain things like, you know, the indoor facility. We've got to have something to work with before we can start saying well yes or no to these other things, because once you get a, the the grow facility defined, um, then we can decide. Although yeah. I think that. I, I thought Lisa's suggestion of limiting it to, ag to uh, industrial and business districts made a lot of sense, but 
with the gloss you've added to it that if we don't get something, then all bets are off, um, <clears throat> that maybe opens it up a bit more and we may have to, so no, I, I would say I, you're, we don't have, we don't have a conclusion yet. Right. Do you oh, I understand that, but my sense is that you're beginning now to limit participation to the, the, the uh, financially sound entrepreneurs, and that the craft growers, so to speak, just just not not going to be able to participate. Well, that you've limited the no, ease of entry is no longer there. No, I, I don't I don't agree. I think that based on I, I had been spinning the agricultural exemption a little differently than Joel put it, but if the fact is that uh, maybe maybe that's back on the table for me, and maybe we can maybe we can work out something like Joe was suggesting that the craft grower can be limited to the 5,000 square feet or 10,000 square right. feet, um, whether opened or closed. Right, and that's more palatable. Uh, as long as we're not opening everything up to 100,000 square feet foot operations. Can, can you limit a craft marijuana grower to a very small thing? How many growers? Yeah, my recollection is it's limited by statute. I think there, somebody either craft or micro businesses. Let's craft. I think it's limited it's micro to micro business. I think that's limited in size. The to craft cooperative can have multiple farmers, but uh, multiple farmers cannot be more collectively than one hundred thousand. One hundred thousand. So it is micro business. It's limited. I think, so. I think to five to tier one. Okay. So yeah. micro business. What we're going to be concentrating to on five units. Craft. To 5,000 square feet. Okay. Um, tier one, so they, again, remembering this concept of canopies, so the regulations have uh, 11 tiers, and tier one is 5,000 feet of canopy. The top one is 100,000 square feet. So if and there's more than one craft, okay, we don't, we don't, we don't can't exceed 5,000? No, we, cr craft can go up to 100,000. It's oh, the wow. we don't even, it's we don't the even micro. have micro, oh, wherever it is, okay. Mm -hmm. It's the micro. But you can fix that. There are a lot of micro you know? So that may be a solution to allow yeah. micro growers in the agricultural more broadly. Right. Two thousand pounds of marijuana now, per year. Now here's what Lisa pointed out. <clears throat> See, here's the definition of micro business. It means a co-located. So they have they have two enterprises going. Co-located marijuana establishment that can either be a tier one marijuana cultivator, in other words, they can grow up to 5,000 square feet, or product manufacturer, or both, in compliance with the operating procedures for each license. A micro business that is a product manufacturer may purchase no more than 2,000 pounds of marijuana per year from other establishments. So what it means is they can have the 5,000 square foot grow facility and they can bring in as much as 2,000 pounds that they will then process. Well, above and so beyond what they grow. What they grow, but the 5,000 square feet, that's, it's the growing that's gonna generate the odor and right. the lights and all that. The, the processing, I mean, I have no idea how much square footage you need to process uh, 2,000 pounds. Presumably they're not gonna come in all at once. They're gonna come in. 2,000 pounds, I'm, I'm just thinking of 2,000 pounds of tobacco. You could process 2,000 pounds of tobacco if comparing tobacco to marijuana yeah. in a place probably not much bigger than your kitchen. All right, yes, yeah. I mean it. Mm -hmm. it I mean, you're not talking. That's an acre. That's an so acre. Is that but yeah. but, but if you process it over the course of a year, unless you do it all at well, once, exactly. you're, talking, you're talking like a, a bundle of day, Joe. Well, I have 2,000 pounds of pot seized in Boston's biggest marijuana bust in memory from 2010. That's small. So apparently it's. Compact. Quite a large amount. Oh, 2,000 pounds is a ton. Yeah. yeah. But, it is but, a ton. but it's not. A canning jar, four canning jars, about 20 ounces of marijuana. But okay. there was a the biggest one. It's a fair amount. Yeah. I but, agree. It, it's, but not, interesting. it's not minor, but if you processed it all at once versus a little bit at a time, you're talking a very small process. Well, area. what's to prevent them to process it all at once? Nothing. Right. Right. But in the point is, in that picture, it fits in one room. So in other words, yeah. in terms of the footprint of the building, 
yeah. um, for well, both for, the grow facility. I, I can't imagine somebody that would want to process that stuff would want to do it all at once because that takes an awful lot of labor. Whereas yeah, you process it. When you process it a little bit at a time over the course of, you can do it over the course of a year. Right. Why not do it over the course of a year to, to, to save your, your pocket money right. and your labor? But in, yeah. in back to the neighborhood, probably don't want 2,000 pounds coming in to your neighborhood with, you know, the trucks and whatever it takes to process all of that, um, as opposed to... I think I don't know. Well, that's, uh, 2,000 pounds is only one truck. 2,000 pounds of marijuana almost fit, would almost fit in a, in a regular standard size eight foot pickup truck. Correct. Yeah, that's not, that's, that's not a, that's, it, it, it's, that's not a lot. Sounds like a lot. Sounds like a lot in the picture. Right. looks like a lot, but if you were to put that into a regular, yeah, my opinion is that is that, yeah, that's a lot of, to get, to get caught with illegally, but yeah. the process. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, whenever I hear comments about trucks, I just think of all of the uh, Amazon trucks in my neighborhood. There's n nothing anybody's going to come up with is going to generate as many trucks as Amazon has. Yeah. Not that I'm proposing, I'm just, it's just my bugaboo about yeah. Amazon trucks and being stuck okay. behind Anyway, yeah. so Jim, have we made it a uh, distinction indoors, outdoors, or both? Yeah, have we? I, I, for one, want to be careful. I, I, I think we're going to start off with an enclosed indoor build, with, with enclosed building indoors. Um, the craft, the micro business, we need to look at that one. That one, that one we may be able to allow differently. So that's 5,000 square feet. So you're talking, we just made the tobacco barn A 11 bins now instead of eight, but. Uh, why can't we set the number? We're talking size-wise. Oh, 5,000 okay. square feet is you know, slightly Pardon? more than a tenth of an acre, so you're not really talking about a whole. If you're talking about outdoors, it's not. It's a small yeah, one. We, we, yeah. we, we need to. We need to look. We're not going to decide that tonight. No. We, what we're looking at is we got some starting points. We got to let Joel get back to that. Okay. It's in the election return. Huh? Yeah. And Where are you going to get back to? You, you still live in the Boston area? Yeah, in Cambridge. You still do. But you travel out here frequently? Regularly. Regularly. <laughs> oh, actually, I spent the night out here two weeks ago because I had a, a 9 a.m. zoning board hearing in Chesterfield. Oh, so I, just want, I just want to leave my house. Do you have a driver there. yet? I know. My wife's retired. I keep telling her I've been needing a driver. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> Well, that's all the more reason you need to go to these meetings. <laughs> so, you got to get a driver. Hey. Well, <laughs> allowing craft growing might be a good safety, or maybe one, one of the other, one what? micro, or maybe one of the other tiers. Um, we need to learn we a need lot. to know a little more yeah, about we that. We need to learn a lot more about the rent. I, I think I completely share Lisa's concern because, you know, you, you see some of the agricultural buildings that can be built there without any restriction, uh, dairy barn or something like that, those are huge buildings. And um, we don't necessarily want a commercial project buying up 10 acres and putting up a huge building. You know, but you at, the, sure. at the other end, we also don't want to deprive people who want to grow of, in a farming community the opportunity to grow something. Yes, but there's no sense jumping in feet first without knowing everything and the repercussion yeah. of it. So, but I'm looking at a hybrid of some sort, like the commercial uses in a commercial district and the craft or micro more broadly distributed. Get a, um, get a clear understanding of what that means. So that, that might be a middle ground that it kind of deals with, with what you were saying about you know, five, five or 6,000 square feet. We, we, we need to define the two and what we can do and then go from there where we would put, be putting them. I think you know, that's, that's a good point. You know. and, and one possibility, just for purpose of discussion here, is that you can allow craft growing Limited to 5,000 square feet, hypothetically, and allow that to be done in, in an agricultural area as opposed to business or industrial. And outdoors, perhaps. And outdoors, yeah. Uh, and then you got the smell that the people well, are, I, you're I, complaining about. Well, I, I think you can regulate as a board based on location. 
is it far enough away so that it isn't? Yeah. I live on Shattuck Road too. Yeah. I did not get the flyer that went out to all of the people who came to the meeting. But I have talked to people and some of the information in that was not factual. So um, you can regulate it based on odor concerns that they have to take care of that. That can be done in greenhouses. I can get you experts that would testify about that sort of thing. Um, so I, I think you could need to be careful not to, like for me, I don't, it doesn't matter to me. I can go out other places. I'm already in another town. Um, but you, you should be able to help the farmers and help Hadley itself with revenue that this can generate. And also not hurt them. Because some people just don't like that. So. But it, it's got to be more than just the motion. It's got to be. It's not a motion, it's the real thing. Yeah, but I heard some things looking at the, the tape, which I did view, um, that it burns your eyes. It doesn't burn your eyes. That it's a noxious odor. It's not a noxious odor if you scrub it. There's a lot of things that can be done, and we, well. that's why I'm pushing to help farmers in handy as well. Joel, we very much appreciate you coming out here today. Yeah, well, thank thanks. you. Yeah, thank you very much. much. That's great. Right. Very yeah. This was really good to help us <clears throat> with this and get, get, you know, where we, where we're okay, where we're not okay, and why we're not okay. And we've got to get it done early to get it to your your group yeah. and get it yeah. back to us if right. there are any questions. Yeah. Well, when when you guys have a pretty good draft, it might be a good time for us to right. take a look yeah. at it then. Okay. Yeah. Because then it's on to MS4. <laughs> <laughs> right. how, is, how is MS4? Is that, or is that in the laws? Is that, that taking effect, Joel? Joel? It's, um, you mean the sewer? The, the, yeah, the clean the, water thing. Right. It's It's... Federal regulation, right? Is it, well, that's the water runoff. Run that's, that's the yeah. water runoff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That is in effect. I believe so. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. We're, 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 we're are, even though it's not on our books, the rule. We're, we're, re we're requiring anybody that comes in for drainage to comply with MS4. Um, so yeah. we, simply because we can't. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it's not in any of our books yet. We're still mm -hmm. under the old. Stuff which isn't terribly out of date. I mean, it's not like we're <laughs> behind the eight ball. The highway department is actually in pretty good condition and to be in compliance with it. So it's really the general and zoning bylaws that we need to address. The rollout, if, if I remember correctly, was based on sizes of communities, but I, I imagine it's in Yeah. yeah. Uh, and because of where we were, especially with. It has a lot to do with combined sewers, obviously. Mm -hmm. And that's why some of the, well, the cities around here, Springfield, Holyoke, they're, Springfield, Chicopee's been uh, separating their sewers now for the, about the last, what did the guy say with the, at the MS4 meeting that that we went to with a uh, seminar? Yeah. Chicopee has spent something like $200 million separating their sewers and they and they've got, got like not the, the sewer from the drainage right so yeah. they're, they're the combined they're combined combined, combined. Yeah, right. and they they're about i think i'm going to take a raw ball like well don't quote me but somewhere around 75 percent complete but it's going to take about 350 million more to do the last 25 percent because i guess that's where it's yeah. way more difficult yeah. had we never had a combination yeah. of sewer we were lucky yes yeah, Urbanized areas. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's been happening. The separation has been happening in the Boston area for twenty years. That is so it's nasty. Like, it's just like, do where you, do you start? And where is the finish? So, do we want to look at first Tuesday of December to meet with you again? Yes. About which? What about this one? About this. One. About this. One. Okay. Yeah. So we want to, we like to, 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 like to, you know, I thought we maybe want to move on this a little bit faster There's so that we're not waiting until April and say, oh, we got to, you know. So do you want me to take the first step at this? Or? What, what I think or I would like Victoria to have you do is devaluing do the, the cleanup the spotter that Joel talked about. Oh, oh, Did you, you just focus on that, right? Wow. And it's 
it's going to pass the, the yeah. equipment Can by you the Farm it? Bureau. Yeah, you no. mean like most of these things that he has. In right, his right. Noted in. Well, I will work on putting words together can't for okay. defining Prohibit. the grow facility and where mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. setbacks okay. and stuff like that. And then between us, we can put it together. Don't worry about the physical stuff. Don't worry about the physical section. I will take care of the physical, what did we call it? Location and, no. Physical requirements, I will take care of and okay. location. Okay. Okay. Good, yeah. And uh, then you just do like, the, the, clean up the other ones. Mm -hmm. And the front page, I wouldn't do much with yet because we may be changing that quite a bit when we decide where it could be done. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, we, there's no harm in leaving them in, and Lisa made a good point about the, uh, <clears throat> although as I said, you are, you might as well leave them in now and see if you're regulating any of them differently. For instance, it turns out you might be regulating micro business differently. Right. So probably worth for now leaving it in and see where you end up. Yeah. All right. Thank you. See you all again. Do we adjourn? Yeah, this is oh, you're done. Um, no, we got one thing to do. Yep. Uh, right. You're you I'm <laughs> okay. right. it's from. Yeah, one invoice. And I'm not sure I gotta check in the town how to pay it or not. We got an invoice on the gazette that we are finally up to date. All of the old past due are done. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Um, thank you, Joel. Thank, thank you, Susan. Joel. All right. Thank you. Good night. Thank you very much. Have, good night. Thank you. That we have one. I thought we were up to date on the current, but evidently the Gazette had a two hundred and ten dollar and ten cent invoice from ten eight that I need to find out from uh, the town accountant if you paid it or not. Are we all set with that, or are you still? No, no we're all set with the old stuff. All done. Okay. All done. Okay. Okay. Only took six months. How much Thank is, God. How much is it? Two, two ten. Two ten and ten cents. So I'll make it in. I will make it in a motion to pop to if needed. I will check to pay two hundred ten dollars and ten cents. I'll make a motion to pay two ten for the Gazette if outstanding. Second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Any opposed? Motion passes. Then we got a. Um, a travel. Uh, Mike, Mr. Sarzinski, and Mr. Michkowski attended a seminar in Holy Cross. In Holy Cross, the fee for each was twenty-five dollars for total of fifty, and then there was another mileage um, of sixty-one dollars and four cents. The total invoice of a hundred. Is that one hundred eleven dollars and four cents? Okay, I'll make a motion to uh, reimburse Michikoski and Sarzinski. No, it's just Sarzinski paid that. He paid everything? Yeah. Oh, okay, 111.04. Sarzinski, 111.04. Okay. For the seminar. We have a motion? We have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Authorized signature. That would be me, huh? I guess. So I did have one question that has come up. Um, Wesley Methodist Church, remember we did a very small subdivision for them a number of years ago, probably about six or seven years ago. Yep. Uh, one was going to be a property in the Shaw Lane and one was a, prop, was a property more adjacent to the church and they are now interested in uh, liquidating both of those. Um, I got a call from the building inspector that, gee, it's been a long time, should we look at that again? Um, I did take a look at the decision. It was a you know, standard, very small subdivision, uh, approved two lots, uh, got conservation restrictions on two larger parcels. In fact, I think, Lisa, you might have been on the board with that. Um, 
there was some confusion over whether there was uh, an eight-year, uh, whether the the um, use was waived or uh, went stale after eight years. And for a residential subdivision, I don't believe that to be the case. There is a uh, clause that says if the zoning changes, it's grandfathered for eight years, but uh, I don't think we have to revisit it now that they're going to sell it. No, not that I can do. And then that, that eight year clause is only if it was approved prior to 1970 or something. There was a time frame in there. <coughs> they're going to sell it for two building lots? Or? Yeah. Hmm? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to sell them separately. One's at the end of Shaw Lane, one comes off of North Maple. It's practically off of the church parking lot. We yeah, added something at the end of a street that wasn't, it was like no other subdivision, and then we added one or something? Right. It was it was something like that. Yeah, Shaw Lane was like a six lot subdivision, and this had frontage on the cul de sac. We right. just extended the uh, roadway slightly and um, gave them one more lot back in there. So, uh, yeah, I'm not aware of any uh, sunset clause. We didn't. We usually don't put anything in. No. Um, so, okay. I got a question on this Berkshire design report dated October 25th. Aren't they supposed to include the drainage because the, you create more parking, you create more bark blacktop, you create more water? And it's supposed to do that, and they didn't. So we got a meeting coming up. Well, they have less roof space. But they got more parking, so you know what. Does they that even out? So more, more, they, they might have put in eight parking spaces. Right. But if, but if you got less roof, you got two thousand square feet less roof. Well, I mean, just to clear it with them, to ask them so they can address that. They didn't address that in there. Do I know? Just as long as they address it in there. Okay. Don't you think? Yeah. yeah. Just to say that, there's, yeah, you have to make a comment in there that there's no, no change. No detrimental change. No, no, no change in impervious area. You know, I, I, I would like to have a discussion about the Senior Center project and what went south on it. Um, I feel the whole blame goes right to the architect and the OPM. <clears throat> Our bylaws are clear and simple, and yet no one came in front of you. Got you three are the authors of our parking bylaw. You guys put that together. There was no attempt on no one from either the architect side or the OPM side to address that directly to you guys, and. They had their interpretation, the selectmen had their interpretation, and I entrusted what you guys said, and that's what I believe, because you guys were the authors of that bylaw. And in, in the contract of the, of the, of the um, architect, on Article 4, Section 4.1, this is what it says. The designer shall perform the work required under this agreement, including AIA document B201-207 attached in conformity with all requirements and standards of the awarding authority, all applicable laws, statutes, ordinances, bylaws, codes, rules, and regulations, and executive orders of the Commonwealth and its political subdivisions and federal government 
the Constitution doc, doc, uh, documents shall comply with all applicable laws, statutes, ordinance, bylaws, codes, rules, and regulations, and executive orders. The designer include, including all approved consultants and subcontractors shall comply with all applicable provisions of rules and regulations of the president. Now, why I'm saying this, in the years past, I worked on projects that they sued the architect and sued whoever designed the project. And <clears throat> they were threatened to take them to court. Number one, a designer or the OPM does not want a lawsuit for black mark against them. And I'm sick and tired of people saying, well, it's this planning board's fault. This planning board, as long as I've been on here with you guys, every project that came in here in front of this board was scrutinized into detail. Why all of a sudden that this has to be rubber stamped and not scrutinized? And how does it end up that we're responsible for the OPM and the, and the architect not following the laws? And yet on top of this, what is I have no problem now with the selectmen order them to downsize them. And they ordered them to downsize for what? To comply with zoning. So if they came to here, come to this board and define the parking, they wouldn't have made all these mistakes and all these errors. And on top of it, they're requesting a hundred and roughly a forty something thousand dollars in change orders for something they should have done and should have known because they got paid well for that. That's why we hire architects, that's why the state mandates that you, the towns, uh, hire an OPM, owner's project manager, protect their town. That's what they protect. The way I look at it, protection like this, the hell I want protection like this for, when it costs you twice as much to get something done, and look at all the time this wasted. Had they complied, they would have been, in, as far as I'm concerned, they would have been under construction in June. And there's no question about that. This should have not dragged off, but people, I want people to know out there, don't look here at this board of, of the fault of this board in delays. Look at the select board, look at the uh, building committee, and look at these two, the architect and this OPM. They're the culprits that are involved in this. And I already called the inspector general's office today, I didn't get a call back, and the AG's office on it. I'm gonna follow it through because I think what they're doing is ripping our taxpayers off. And I, I certainly would like some comment from you guys, the authors of this bylaw. The, the architect clearly goofed on the parking requirement. And you're right, they never asked us, what does the parking mean? How do you do this? Many, many other developers have come in here ahead of time and says, if they don't understand something, um, go back many times. You know, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? A lot of, you know, how many times have people come in as a walk-in, we want to do this, what do you think? And these people have got some bad information and ran with it and never questioned it. And 20 years ago, you three sat on this board when the elementary school came here and the public safety uh, came through here. How come there was no problems with those two? And that was a $7.1 million project. How come there was no problems with that? 
I don't Tell remember me. who the OPM or the architect was, but but there was no problems there was with no that. Problem that I can remember. Both of those projects went on target, went on schedule, and there was no problems with it. Why all of a sudden, amid these two major projects, there's all kind of trouble? We have the three of you sat on then, and the three of you sat here now. We have worked from for as long as I've been on the board to uh, be as accessible as we can be, given that we don't have any paid staff, which is why um, the town clerk, back to Joanna Devine days, was giving out my phone number and Jim's phone number if someone called and asked for the planning board. And Jim and I both have our numbers on the uh, town uh, website. And all of the planning board email comes to me. And frankly, apart from some very minor questions about how many copies of the application do we need to file, um, we didn't have any substantive contact from the architect or the OPM prior to the uh, prior to the application actually being filed. And I know that Jim went to uh, one meeting and uh, made multiple comments to the uh, the presenters. That was January, maybe? Oh, yeah. Uh, and um, basically ignored, I think. Yeah, they did. They, they, well, this is what we're going to do, and this is what we're going to do. And they, do you have any better drawings? We don't have the drawings yet. We don't have the drawings yet. For the, people, for the people out in the audience, what is the purpose of this board? What do they protect? And why do they protect? What is the purpose of this planning board? Who does it protect? Citizens of the town of Hadley. And its properties. Yep. Yep. And its properties to the fullest. There's no question about it. So I just want to make sure that the note is out there that this board works hard to protect its town. All of us have been voted by the people of this town. And that's who we protect their rights and the town's rights. But this senior center got a raw deal. They probably didn't understand all the mechanisms behind this and just went with the flow. The selectmen, they did nothing but rubber stamp it. They would have never, ever ordered them to downsize to come into, into uh, compliance unless we didn't force them. That's all I have to say. I don't like it, and I'll tell you what, I'm going to pursue this with the Attorney General and the Inspector General. You going to pick this back? Yeah. Okay, motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Oh.